cigars all around. Acapella. Cheers, y'all. Everyone keeps saying we're sitting way too close together. Yeah. Well, 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 well. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fine little radio program, the world famous Smoking and Toasting. Show number 178 is here, and yes, we are uh, breaking social distancing rules by sitting I'm not. far too close together. Oh, you're leaning back. We're sanitizing yeah. via bourbon. Yeah, I just want you to know we've done, we've 409 the whole um, the whole room. I mean, everything was wiped down thoroughly, so we're feeling pretty okay about being here and uh, doing the show, and hopefully that's uh, something that can that can continue. It's show number 178. We are doing our first ever Whiskey Blind Taste Test today. We'll get to what that means and uh, who our special guests are momentarily, but we want to let you know that we're bought, brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant, 1814 Washington Ave in Houston, and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth, BB Italia on Memorial in Houston, BB Lemon on Washington Ave, and the Annie Cafe and Bar on Post Oak Boulevard in Houston, but don't go to any of them today because they're all closed. But order uh, out. Yeah, but order out. Exactly. That's the way to do it. And we're also brought to you by our latest sponsor, Corona Beer, whose new slogan is, we swear to God we had nothing to do with it. <laughs> uh, not really. No, honestly. Uh, so they actually did I'm still surprised that people just aren't drinking Corona Beer. Now, I'm not, I'm not a Corona Beer drinker in the first place, right. so I have a good excuse to not drink Corona Beer. Right. But I'm pretty sure you're not getting coronavirus. From Corona beer. That's just you know. That's just the never. What was it? Was it P.T. Barnum who said you'll never go broke by uh, underestimating the intelligence of the American public? Well, didn't it wasn't he the one that had the sign that said to see the egress? Yeah. <laughs> and everyone went out to see the egress and had yeah. to pay to get back in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome to the show. Uh, a couple of our very favorite special guests, uh, friends of the show. But not Brian's uh, favorite, I see. But not Brian's favorite? No. Yeah, what do you say? Brian. Uh, Brian said, all hell, Alan and Chris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Alan Denny is here. Alan, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so nice to have you back. It's nice to be back. You know? And uh, we are thrilled to have you here. We know that you are uh, obviously a friend of the show. Uh, even though we've been told that nobody cares about you, we care about you. So that's that's good enough for us because it's our show. Uh, and then uh, we are, of course, doing uh, the Whiskey Blind Taste Test today. And so it would not be appropriate to do a blind taste test of whiskey without, without at Woodard. least one whiskey <laughs> expert in the room. You knew that was coming, and right? And so uh, <laughs> we invited our uh, uh, the really the only whiskey expert we know. No offense, Alan. What about Wade Woodard? Well, I don't know. Wade's an expert on whiskey <laughs> labeling. I'll give him that. He's an expert on whiskey labeling. Uh, no, uh, Chris Hart, who's been acclaimed and, and is, um, you know, not only the guy that's, you know, behind the Houston Bourbon Society and the Houston Whiskey Social, two of our favorite things, but he has also been acclaimed by Texas Monthly Magazine as a whiskey expert. So, um it's great to have you on, Chris. Thanks for having me back. I'll try to be better this time. <laughs> oh, oh, you were great last I hate, time. I hated that beer last time. And it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, but see, that's that's okay. See, on on this show, it's okay to say what you you know really think. So I hope so. So you guys uh, staying healthy? Coronavirus stuff is like affecting everything. Yep. Uh, but we are thrilled to be here doing the show. I know a lot of people are working from home, so I'm wondering if that means we'll have like even larger viewership today. Or if it means we'll have smaller viewership today, I have no idea. <laughs> so could be it's easier to watch, you know, if you're working from home. But then again, you might not need the distraction. You may be watching, you know, Star Trek Picard or something while you uh, sure, sure, uh, it's uh, worth watching. It's yeah, pretty good. Absolutely. It's a really good yeah, show, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Okay, I hang out with a lot of geeks. Geeked out for a moment there, but it's all good. Uh, so welcome to the program. We are uh, very excited to get to our whiskey tastings, which we'll do in the next segment. We're only going to do one beer tasting today. We'll do that in our first segment, uh, and so we'll get to that in just a moment. But this show is crazy. It's going to be a nutty show, and we're trying to keep the segments uh, a little shorter. We'll do a bonus segment at the end because I have a feeling. We're not going to be finished, so uh, that's just the way it'll roll. Ian, um, welcome. It's great to see you. And uh, tell me about uh, tell me about your week. Tell me about your uh, your smoking experiences. You smoke anything interesting lately? I did. I had an H. Upman 1844 and Yeho this morning. Oh, nice. It was nice. I'm assuming it was nice. You tell Thanks, me. Thanks, man. Is that the one we had earlier? Yes. Uh, I mean, well, you had it. I had something. You, so yeah, you had something. Yeah. Well, we're going to hear about that. We're going to hear about yours in just a minute here. So while while we were talking, I was also uh, doing my cigar review. 
Uh, so the appearance on this He thing, wasn't listening to you, in other words, is, Chris. That's what he was trying that's to That's what say. I heard. That's yeah. what I heard. Were you there, actually? I was there. I was so, there. Okay. <laughs> Sitting across from you, the you appropriate You had to be there because I had a whiskey yeah. in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's a AM whiskey. That's a nice thing. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, uh, so the appearance on this is uh, kind of a milk chocolate brown, smooth with some veins, mostly firm. I like the label on it. It's a real classy kind of brushed brass look. It's a paper label, but it looks like kind of like that brushed brass with a brown label. Uh, the pre-light uh, sniff on this earthy barnyard coffee sweet spice um, was what I was getting off it. On the draw, I used a clip. Uh, the draw was effortless on this real mild sweet creaminess right off the uh, right off the beginning of this with mild spice and tangy fruity kind of finish to the pre-light draw. The pre-light draw was almost as interesting as smoking a cigar. I, I love when that happens. Was, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really cool. The initial light on this had some mild pepper, uh, toast, cashew, coffee, sweet creaminess right off the bat. I mean, this was if you're a if you're a mild to medium cigar smoker, this is like the next level for you because this is a medium minus mm-hmm. maybe. Like if you take the center point of what a medium strength cigar would be, is slightly underneath that overall. I'll go ahead and give that away. Um, but the sweet creaminess that, that follows throughout the cigar is absolutely. You'll hear me say this a bunch of times. So the first third of this toast, sweet cream butter. It had this kind of butteriness to it that was really, really delicious. Nice. And I don't know that I've ever tasted that particular flavor in a cigar. It was really yeah. interesting. Hmm. Uh, cashew was definitely like it had a nuttiness, but it was definitely cashew. You know how cashew has that kind of sweetness mm-hmm. to it. It was definitely that kind of sweetness to the to the nutty flavors and this tangy, a little bit earthy finish on it. Um, big silky smoke. I kept blowing uh, smoke rings the whole time we were uh, sitting there chatting. I've never learned how to do that. Uh, you know, I'm not great at it, but it's enjoyable anyway. <laughs> Uh, the nuttiness and coffee uh, dominates the second third of the cigar. Notes of sweet cream and earth with light pepper finish. Perfect burn on this thing. Nice. Like, uh, you can look at the pictures and see the perfect burn. The uh, the last third of the cigar, pepper ramps up. Sweet, creamy notes remain. Um, but the pepper ramps up in a way where it's not too strong. Uh, it, 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 it was nice. It was there. But it, it, the cigar with the pepper notes leads you into the pepper notes. It doesn't start off as a pepper bomb. But the pepper notes build up a little bit over the body, of the, over the over the smoking time of the cigar. The body builds up just a little bit to where by the end of it, it's very, very nice flavor and keeps it interesting and keeps it intense. Um, the finish on this cigar at that point in time is very sweet. Uh, sweet, nutty, and earthy kind of flavors. A lot of coffee going all the way through this. I was super happy with it. Uh, this is a seven and a half dollar cigar. I'm going to easily give it a five and a half on the scale. Nice. It's worth every penny of that seven and a half dollars. Maybe a little more. If I paid eight and a half or nine, I'd be probably quite happy with it. Nice. Um, it uh, it smoked reasonably fast. It wasn't a super long smoke, uh, but it was a very nice cigar. So Excellent. overall, five and a half. I was real happy with it. Not bad. Not bad at all. How about you? I uh, I did something interesting this week. I uh, smoked uh, something that I, I saw in a um, cigar shop in the French Quarter in New Orleans. My wife and I had uh, gone down there a week or so ago. And uh, I saw this, and I go, oh, I've never seen this before. So I grabbed it, and, uh, and well, I didn't just grab it. I paid for it. Uh, but I, uh, I, then I, they tackled you yeah, on the way right, out the door. Right, right. <laughs> Brought it home with me and, uh, and wound up smoking it this week. Now, it's a Deadwood Tobacco Sweet Jane Sturgis Edition, uh, Sturgis Limited Edition uh, cigar. And I'd, I've had the Sweet Jane. Okay. And my wife loves the Sweet Jane cigars a lot. I think it's a pretty good cigar overall. I've never seen the Sturgis edition. Well, this is how clueless I am. I had no idea that this was an infused cigar. Yeah. I just, it just, you know, it looked good in the box. I didn't pay attention. I just like, oh. I'll it's not this. infused. It's not infused. What do you mean it's not infused? It's pipe tobacco. There it is. Well, okay, so we'll get to that. Uh, here, uh, I didn't know at the time that Deadwood was made by Drew Estate. So uh, I, then I might have guessed that there would be some kind of additional mm-hmm. infusion or a, a additional let's, flavoring Let's face to it, it so. though. Do you have a picture of the label? You bought it because the label's awesome. Uh, the label was just way too yeah. cool. Yeah, and, and uh, it's, it's, on a, it's on the picture that you'll see there. It's a, it's, you're, so you're right. You know, you put a skull or a Day of the Dead thing on something, I'll probably buy at least one. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a few it. of the yes. tequila bottles at your house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> see? See, there you go. So here's the particulars. Uh, Nicaraguan tobacco, Maduro wrapper. Uh, I could detect some sweet. 
sweetness on it when I was, you know, punching it and getting it ready. Uh, and uh, so once I fired it up and and then I realized it was infused, or Alan has corrected me, that it's actually uh, pipe tobacco, which makes total sense, by the way, based on the flavors I was getting. Um, so anyway, once I could tell it was flavored, I uh, I went off to the Internet and I discovered why the cigar reminded me so much of an you, acid. You asked it was, the Googles. Uh, I asked the Googles and uh, that it was made by Drew Estate. So the pre-light uh, was dominated by a real distinct sweetness. Once I lit it, that honeyed sort of sweetness vibe was joined by a more traditional Maduro tobacco sweetness. They both kind of work together on that. That's Cavendish, uh, by yeah. the way. That well, yes. Uh, that so honestly, it took me a few moments to get used to this because I wasn't expecting it. But once uh, you know, once I kind of settled settled down, uh, I started to really enjoy it. The flavor reminded me of the acid cold fusion tea cigar, which is one that I used to smoke uh, quite frequently. Uh, it was very smooth, very full of flavor. The Deadwood line uh, from Drew Estate is named after the Deadwood Tobacco Company and Cigar Bar mm-hmm. in Deadwood, South Dakota, which is one of the first locations that ever carried Drew Estate cigars. And uh, that was back when Jonathan Drew was first starting out. In addition, they made this one to commemorate the Sturgis Bike Rally, which of course has all the major ties to Deadwood. And uh, uh, So in addition to the sweetness, there were solid notes of coffee, Earl Grey tea, the burn was perfect, and yes, Cavendish. Absolutely. It it reminded me of having a very aromatic pipe smoke. So um, after I got over my initial surprise, um, I really loved it. Uh, I hadn't had an acid in quite some time, although I did try one of those newly re-released Lars Teton cigars this was actually much better, uh, much better. Uh, it was medium bodied, bodied quite good. If you don't like flavored cigars at all, this one's not going to change your mind. Uh, but if you're like me and you enjoy them once in a while, it's a nice one to have in your humidor. Eight to nine dollar cigar, price to quality. I'll give it a five. I enjoyed it. I wouldn't want to have paid ten bucks for it, but uh, I enjoyed it. So there's a there's a few in that line. There's the Fat Bottom Betty, and there's the um, well. Crazy Alice. Yes. Crazy Inter- Alice. So yeah. it's interesting that you mentioned that. Isn't the that line hands? has three. Sweet mm-hmm. Jane, Crazy Alice, Fat Bottom Betty, and the line was originally called Three Yummy Bitches. <laughs> Not exactly the most woke uh, name, but they changed it, and sharing that allowed me to say woke and bitches on the same show, which I, <laughs> you know, which is always so been they a, also, a dream of mine. They you know? also offer the Sweet Jane in a tin. Mm-hmm. Yes, with, with the little cigarillos. The yeah. smaller, mm-hmm. yeah, the almost, is this cigarillo size? Yeah. I don't, yeah, okay. Yeah. And like I said, my wife loves those because she doesn't like to dedicate a lot of time to smoking a cigar. And, and she, she likes enjoys the, the flavored or, yeah. cigars, but she also doesn't like the ones that are infused, like really heavy, perfumey stuff. Mm-hmm. And those have become her favorite because it's a very authentic Right. Sweet cigar. It was it's an not, enjoyable smoke. I mean, yeah, I was, it doesn't I, taste. It doesn't smell or taste like weird perfume. To be totally honest, or once, I, once I got into the first third, I thought I don't think I'm going to like this very much. And by the time I finished the cigar, I had really yeah. enjoyed it. So it was very. Cool. Yeah, it's a little polarizing. Now, actually. Chris, when Ian was, you know, doing his cigar research today, you had something that you weren't so crazy about. Yeah. So Ian reached out to me this morning and said, "Hey, I'm going to be at uh, Casa de Monte Cristo. Do you want to come by and have a smoke?" I said, "You know, it's been a minute. I'm going to have a smoke. Let's do it." So mm-hmm. I, I walked in, and I was kind of in the mood for an opus. I've, I've always loved the special occasion opus. Mm-hmm. I don't get to see you guys very often. I wanted to kind of treat myself. Nice. Right. I do like an opus. But I walked in, and sitting right next to the Opus X's were the My Father Sticks, the, is it Jaime Garcia? Yeah, Jaime, Jaime Garcia. Garcia mm-hmm. The Reserva Especial, 10th Anniversary 2019. And I thought, it looks good. I have had great experiences with My Father Cigars. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. Now, it was $20 a stick. Wow. Decent <coughs> ring gauge. I, mm-hmm. I don't know what the ring gauge is. I'm going to guess 54. Mm-hmm. It felt like a nice 54 uh, ring gauge. And at least uh, six and a half to seven inches, depending on who you ask. Wink, wink. Mm-hmm. And uh, unless you ask a fisherman, then it was yeah. twelve inches. And it, 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 as soon as I cut it, it, it the wrapper broke. Uh, the draw, <laughs> oh, the draw man, was I a, hate that. the draw was a bit stiff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it had trouble keeping evenly lit. It just was a bad stick. You know, th- that's that's disappointing enough if it's a six or seven dollar cigar. But when you've paid big, oh, when you know, you pay 20 super bucks, premium I'll, money for a cigar, I, that's I'll so it, disappointing. I'll put it this way. I hate the stick more than I hate the coronavirus. And uh, I, <laughs> well, here's the deal. Well, At $20 a stick, when the wrapper cracks when you cut it, mm-hmm. and it's not like this is your first cigar, so it's not like you were fumbling around wondering what to do. Sure, sure. You know, uh, like, 
and that that sucks. It just it just wasn't good. It was dry. I don't know if it was a one off. You know, sometimes you have consist- consistency variations between sticks. Uh, I, I wasn't happy. Overall, I'll keep it short. Uh, I would not have bought that again. And even if the next stick is markedly better, I still probably will never buy right. another one. Because now price. you have the stigma. See, you're absolutely right. And I, uh, I've had that issue with a, a few cigars. And it's really hard to plunk down the money again if you had a bad experience, especially if it was really expensive. Well, we've, so. we've had the same conversation about the stick that we did. Uh, the, the, the blend that we did with Room 101 was a $10 stick, and uh, the, the sample I had was fantastic. But when they actually came in, is this for me? Uh, well, uh, Did you notice you, how hard you, I poured that? If, yeah, you yeah. Don't, if you don't have one, yes. <laughs> You're a good man. Yeah, no, when, when those sticks came in, they, they the first we me and Alan opened them together, the first half pack all cracked as soon as we cut them. Cut them. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if it was a humidity issue or construction issue. or just. And a, the flavor um, was so great on those cigars, too. I, I don't know if it – dude, uh, the, the draw on them were perfect. The flavor was fine. It was construction issues. That was the yep. only problem yep. we had. And Which unfortunately – our, our the, the whiskey oh, social yeah, stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had some issues with some uh, of mine. Unfortunately, uh, you, you're paying ten dollars a stick or hundred a hundred dollars per ten pack. If it if it's gonna break like that, and that's nothing that we could have done. You, it's right. just like a barrel selection for whiskey. When you taste samples, you expect them to be a speaking example for the entire for the barrel. entire line. Yeah, sure, sure. Right. Mm-hmm. When we did our our pick, we we loved them, and, and they didn't. Uh, they sold well at first. But then they lagged. I wonder yeah, why. I wonder why. Sure. So I did hear from a few people of construction issues, and that's, that's something I, that I we sent c- you a photo of when I was. Yeah, smoking. yeah. you and yeah. Wade, so Wade both. Yeah. Mine. I think my my ten pack that I bought was luckier than yours because yours. I think almost all of yours had issues. Mine. I only had issues with. I think three of the cigars mm-hmm. and the rest of them smoked. Really and we well. loved them as is. But and then remember when you had them uh, before when you came on the show or we went to your. We did your podcast, and we came on, and you handed us a few, and we yeah. had five. There's no problem. Yeah, they were wonderful. Those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were they were great cigars. It's just, and that's frustrating. And that's got to be super frustrating to oh sure to the to you, of course, hundred percent. If uh, we try to yeah. do it again, good luck. Even if right. they're great, it's going to take some word of mouth before they they move. Well, you know what? We'll make sure to get some and smoke them. And if we, uh, uh, you know have good experiences we can pass that on and help uh, help make another because because i love that you guys did your own cigar i thought that was great i, that was I super love cool. the idea you know we're in a, a beautiful position to be able to bring cool i can cuss on the show right yes i love the idea of bringing cool shit to houston but it has to be good yes or what's the point or what's the point exactly right? so consistently right. good so, consistently uh, good yes there you go so uh i wanted to jump into the beer uh ian has already poured this i brought these back from Ooh, new orleans dank only to discover that they actually have a brewery in houston too they have a brewery and tap room in houston and new orleans uh it is holy roller hazy juicy ipa from urban south brewery and uh, I checked them out on the internet, as I want to do, and uh, discovered, yes, they have a tap room and, and brewery in Houston as well as New Orleans. I had one of these at lunch uh, when I was in New Orleans, and I thought, ooh, i got to buy a six-pack of those before I uh, head out, and we'll try this on the show. So I wanted to see what you guys think. I know uh, I'm generally the IPA guy. Ian likes some of them, not all of them. But, Chris, I know you really like the hazies, so I thought this would be a good a good let time. Me, so let me go ahead and just show. straighten that up. I like good beers. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> good is good. If it's good, it's good. I, I'm with you 100%. It's we've, a, we've disagreed on some IPAs, <laughs> you know? This but has a okay. sweet note up front, very juicy, and there's a little bit of that dank pine note that kind of reminds you of, I mean, I don't, I'm not familiar. Have you ever heard of something called marijuana? There's a, like a danky, funky... From what I Skunk. understand, there's, there's a bit of that there. Yes, yeah, this yeah. does have a like not okay. So there's a there's a actual thing that's called like beer skunks. If it's mm-hmm. um, exposed, exposed to light to and temperatures, and UV and uh, or bad or bad temperature fluxes and things like that. So this doesn't have that kind of skunk, but yeah. it does have that like what you're talking a about. Dankness, it's a little yeah. resinous, a little, a little mm-hmm. funky, a little resinous funk notes. in the uh, yeah. in the back of it. And I got to tell you, for it, something that has. That resonance, I just chewed on a pine cone a little bit kind of flavor to it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't finish and leave you stuck with the pine cone in your right. teeth. It finishes this, more citrus. This is actually pretty well balanced overall, if you ask me. I think it's great. I, yeah. I love that it's uh, made with uh, mosaic and citra hops, and it says on the can, a bold IPA for all of us caught between 
best intentions and bad behavior. So it's, good, good marketing. Uh, and a totally roller. Did we show that to the camera? Yeah, yet? I had it up there. Uh, okay. uh, hazy, juicy IPA. It's interesting because it doesn't taste like it's... Was. Alan, do you have anything to say? You have drank all yours. Not all. <laughs> I found an IPA I like. You like this one? This one? I, now, I'm also one of those guys that in the morning I can drink a glass of grapefruit juice. I love it. Right. That's what I get a That's lot of. A lot of grapefruit. Yeah. 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 No and you're a Heineken I like drinker, this. right? I agree. You like Heineken? <sighs> Heineken's not an IPA. No, no, no. no. But, but he's a Heineken drinker. No, in I'm not. What? The- <laughs> I drink Brian, stouts. Wait, Wiki Brian is saying uh, he's defining beer skunk. See oh, also Heineken. Okay, uh, yeah, Heineken Heineken comes in a green bottle, and skunk flavor is just a part of what I think people like expect from that, and I can't understand why people love that beer. It's oh, very yeah. bizarre to me. It is. Uh, I was told one time, though, because uh, I was railing on uh, Heineken for being crappy beer, I was told it wasn't that bad a beer if you buy it or if you get it out of a keg. So I bought one of those little mini kegs. To test the theory. And tested the theory. And it's actually substantially better out of a mini keg than a green bottle. I know but people- it's still, I think it has a little bit of that skunk flavor. And I think the reason it has that skunk flavor is because that's what people expect. It's been tasting like that for so long. That they, I think they maybe had to even like make that just a part of the flavor. I don't know what the deal is. I actually know people who drink Heineken over ice. It dilutes it and takes away a little of the skunk flavor. And I'm like, well... Why should you, you have to take away the skunk flavor? If, if you want diluted beer, just, just get a Michelob Ultra. Yeah, why don't you just buy a beer that doesn't have that skunk flavor? Right, right, and it doesn't have any of the skunk uh, flavor. Okay, we're going to take a break. We, we are uh, about to get into the blind whiskey taste test, but uh, thank you guys for sampling uh, the beer, and I hope you liked it. I... Uh, Thought it was great and wanted to bring it back to share it with you guys. So uh, Thank, good beer. thanks so much. And, beer. and now I'm can finding you find out, it locally. Now I'm finding out I can get it here in uh, in Houston. Yes. So, but not just the tap room on the shelf. I have not seen it on the <laughs> shelf, but I bet we could find it. The sound you just heard, by the way, was the whiskey bottles clanking together because Adam's got a huge collection of them. Chris brought some in. Alan brought some. Ian brought some. I brought some. So uh, I brought all the cheap stuff. So you can blame me for that. Um, but we'll uh, be back and start the blind taste testing in our next segment. It's Smoking and Toast and Show number 178. Jesus. Halfway, Halfway to, to 200. 200. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I was about to say, we have 14, uh, 12. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. We are so glad to have you uh, checking out show number 178. It's our first ever whiskey blind taste test. We'll get to that in just a moment. And our guests are Alan Denning and Christopher Hart. We're brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant. All the uh, B&B and related uh, restaurants are closed right now, but check them out for takeout. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, once this uh, stuff all finally uh, returns slightly more to normal, uh, then go back and and, you know, and enjoy the bacon. Here's the thing: if their butcher shop is still open, <laughs> yeah, you can take the Chef Tommy bacon yeah. kit home. You've been oh, talking I forgot about this. They do that. You've been talking yeah, about you this can for buy a long the time. Kit yes, okay, got and it. take it home. It has everything you need to make that amazing, delicious. I want to like wear it like cologne bacon. Oh, we need to ask Jeremiah if the butcher shop is open. I we would go should. over there right after yeah. this because I got um, nothing going on. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's absolutely a great idea. Yeah. Now a lot of the bars and restaurants in our area, you're not supposed to be I'm not, tasting sorry, sorry. Yet. I didn't know I didn't know uh, where you were supposed to start. Uh, uh, so a lot of the bars and restaurants in our area are closed except for uh, takeout orders as people do, you know, self-isolation for the coronavirus and as uh, you know, people begin to, you know, grapple with all of this. There's, as of now, 200,000 confirmed cases around the world, but a herd of elephants in China have uh, found an interesting way to make the most of people putting themselves in um, self isolation. Uh, 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 there is, um, uh, let's see now, I. I've lost the uh, I've lost the article. I apologize. I'm familiar with it. If you uh, well, basically the elephants uh, uh, self isolated in an area where they located some whiskey and basically like drank themselves silly. And and there's <laughs> photos on the internet of the elephants just like passed out, down, yeah. drunken elephants, passed out, drunken elephants from. Uh, nice. Uh, they broke into a place uh, to self isolate apparently and uh, did it with whiskey. So hey, if you're going to if you're going to self isolate, isolate where there's whiskey. Right. Yeah, it's 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 just a wonderful I'm going to do that. I'll call it my house. So speaking of home. speaking of whiskey, here's how the uh, blind taste test is going to work. We're going to do four uh, uh, quick tastes per segment. 
We'll uh, talk a little bit about them, whether we like them, what we what we get, and then we'll rank them one through four at the end of the segment. After we rank them, Adam will reveal to us what each one of them was. At the Are end, they all of bourbon. The show, no, they're not all bourbon. Okay. Okay. At the end of the show, uh, uh, we will go back and say of the things we tasted, these were our favorites. Let's say maybe our top five. Uh, out of out of the whole show, okay. Okay. So let's start with the first one. I know Chris got a, a head start, so maybe Chris, you can offer your first thoughts. Yeah. So uh, this is one of two things. Mm-hmm. I think it's either sourced whiskey, young whiskey, or mm-hmm. uh, craft whiskey. So there's a it's a bit off putting a little bit. Uh, it's a little from green. One, it's either craft or sourced. Yeah. Well, <laughs> maple. What I mean is like someone who's new, like you know, a lot of young Texas distillers. Yeah. There's only mm-hmm. like you know their their whiskey's like 15 months old versus. 10 years and that right. sort of thing. Right. Uh, or it's sourced whiskey. I mean, the nose on it is not completely off-putting, but... Mm-mm. The nose is caramel. I was going to say, I, I actually like it because it's got a, a... I don't it hate is, it. It is a little young, I agree. It's but the aftertaste, not. though. The aftertaste yeah. has yeah. that kind of green, youngish kind of thing yes, going on. That's, that's when you get that sense of it maybe being a little more young. But I do love the caramel. I think the caramel is fantastic. Um, so, all right. Um, Overall, I'm not a fan. Overall, not a fan. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and move to number two. Can I also mention uh, that IPA that you poured last segment? I can't yes. get over how great it was. It, it reminds that me that was a lot of fun. Wasn't so it? we we briefly talked about uh, Spindle Tap being great. Mm-hmm. I love Houston Hayes. And yes. When I say it's a daily drinker, I mean we always keep it stocked. It's, and a, it's a great daily drinker. It's nothing special, Houston but Hayes also is fantastic. And they're five percent tint. I was just about to shit on it. Oh, really? Yeah. I love it. It's I one think of there's my a consistency beers. issue. Like, well, every, I haven't run into that. So, other than that, I think it's it's. I don't hate it, but Houston Hayes is fantastic. I definitely think five percent tint's kind of a not as great as as the Houston Hayes. Well, but. clearly it's not as high ABV and it's not as high calories, and so it's gonna not step quite up to where Houston Hayes does. Uh, I just had their double, by the way, which was fantastic. Just oh, their just, double? Yeah, they've oh the uh, Calavera thing that we talked about. No, they've they've released a double IPA, uh, and it's it's got this old. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of it off the top of my head, and I'm not doing it. But the illustration on it is an old, like a 16-bit video game look uh, to it, and the guy's got hops for hands. But it's all very uh, like old-school video game uh, looking. I have to look it up. We have the internet, so we can do that. Sure, but sure. let's but let's move forward to whiskey number two. So this is obviously peated scotch. Mm. Oh, how could you tell? <laughs> oh yeah, no way. The to barbecue tell that. note. Yeah, the barbecue yeah. note. Well, I asked Ian to at least bring one, uh, possibly two, uh, peated scotches just to throw into the mix because uh, even though we're not doing a peated taste test, I thought it'd be interesting to see how these fare with us in in the midst of all of this. Sure, you know? sure. Because yeah. when you're standing in the aisle at the store, like you're like, what do I want? You know, I could go this way, I could go that way. So it's good. To, it's good to get a sense in a in a larger, more worldview sense of of how these uh, of how these affect us. Uh, your thoughts, Chris? Yeah, so two things. One, I think the beer you were talking about is called Heavy Hands. Heavy Hands. That's it. Yep. Thank you. And uh, secondly, this is this is it reminds me of Ardbeg. This uh, reminds yeah. Of this reminds me of Ardbeg, but kind of a. And a little older Ardbeg. It's not super young. Their their mm-hmm. younger Ardbeg is really bright. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of Ardbeg, and I'm definitely getting that Ardbeg petrol note. Ellen? I don't like Pete. <laughs> <coughs> what did uh, Pete ever do to you? Huh? <laughs> well, He's Whiskey okay Pete guy. has been a, I mean, uh, <laughs> nah, you know, <laughs> since not the first time I met Chris, but the first time we had a meeting. Yeah, you were a 14 uh, Caribbean cask. Yeah, and, and Chris introduced me to some Pete's, and it's just not my jam. And he has tried over the years different stuff. Here, try this. We even had a a peated bottle share one time, and it was or, or a, a yeah. And it, it's the time that Alex from NASA sold that bottle to Gene. It's oh uh, the, uh, the, we did an Isla tasting one time. Yeah. Uh, the the I've tried to convince him he's not sold on Pete, but. Uh, are we going to find out what these are? Because yes. I would like to know what the first one was. At the end of the segment, once we've ranked these four on, a, on our personal uh, okay. list, we'll find out what they all are. So Westland does uh, an American peated whiskey that I actually enjoy because it's more the smoke and the salt. It's not that medicinal taste. This sure. is not as bad as some of the ones I've had. Which makes me think it's a little older. It's yeah. probably like a special Have you edition. had the uh, Kill Almond? 
I've had the it's killer more ones, yeah. smoky than yeah. meaty. And yeah. really and some it's of more the, young, some yeah. of the ones that are that are more smoky, I can do. Well, it's the it's the Ardbegs and the Lafroigs that just I don't want anything to do. Uh, with Ian them. really kind of got me going on on peated whiskeys. I'd had them before, but it wasn't really my jam either, and so I didn't really stay with it. Um, thanks to Ian, I've you know tasted more and begun to develop a bit of a taste for it. Like I, I, I can appreciate it much so, more than I did. Pete initially. is a very polarizing taste in the first place. Sure, like, of course. and a lot of people will liken it to a band aid or say it has a very medicinal mm-hmm. kind of flavor. But the fact is, if you taste this whiskey here and you get right past the peat, there's a just a wonderful sweetness yes, to it. Agreed. That, that really a nice mm-hmm. sweetness. Uh, so your take on this, you like this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like it too. And, uh, and again, I'm not the world's biggest uh, Pete guy, but this is uh, this is working for me. So this, my my liking this is kind of like Ian liking an IPA. You, you know, what, the only thing I'm struggling with is I'm still you know, we smoke cigars before this, mm-hmm. and it is messing with my mind a little bit because I'm, ha- I'm having. I a don't little... have that problem, but I smoke cigars regularly, yeah. so I'm not. Uh, uh, I, I'm used to that being part of my palate experience, I guess. So. You get a cleansing wipe and wipe your tongue off. <laughs> we do have some of those, but we have a bottle of 409. All right, let's go to the uh, third sample. We'll do four four samples in this segment. Thank you, Adam. And Adam is Oof. randomizing these for us. So the this smell on this is fantastic. Yeah. This uh, smells like maple syrup and oh, man. bacon. This mm. smells like a dusty, a dusty bourbon. Yeah, a dusty bourbon. Okay. Reminds me of this. What is that? Uh, well, we'll get to that, I guess. It's an it's an '80s bean decanter, hundred mm. hundred seventy fifth mm. anniversary, uh, but it's got that that oh yeah. Well, let me just tell you, this is freaking fantastic. Yeah, that's, so far <laughs> this that's definitely so the winner good. of this round. Oh yeah, so good, so good, Ian. I had to do a little palate cleanse on there, but um, after the peat. Yeah, after the peat, I thought that. Well, I drank and a the cigar and the beer. Really and nice. <laughs> um. This is what we. This do. is really, we're, really we're good. This quote, this has a lot of what I like in the bourbon. This has that great, clean mineral aftertaste <laughs> that I really enjoy, yes. and um, and it's really, really sweet and round up front. Mm-hmm. Have you ever uh, thought about doing a themed version of this show, like where you uh, you guys both have a few drinks, watch a controversial movie, and then argue over whether or not it was good? <laughs> Like I'd lo- I'd love to do an episode of this where we argue over how bad Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was. But see, this that is not can a we, bad. That can was, we do a show? was not a good movie. Oh, it was we do awesome. a show on how awesome Conan is. So, so which this one? Is, this is Conan, the, the only one. one. The Barbarian or remake. the talk show host? Oh, you mean yeah, the talk show host <laughs> is fantastic. We don't yeah. talk about anything except for the first Conan. Okay, yeah, there so. is no there is shame no on you for ever even mentioning our mentioning. Aquaman. So we the Aquaman watch episode. Outbreak and then it's kind of uh, like that's kind of like talking about the third Godfather. <laughs> we don't talk about the yeah, third. No, there wasn't yeah. one. There was a third Godfather. No, exactly. Yeah, it's it's like <laughs> slightly the rules, redeemed. <laughs> the rules of Godfather. You don't talk Aquaman. about the third Godfather. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this, uh, uh, Alan, your thoughts on oh, this? This is great. It's a little bit hotter and. Mm-hmm. I like higher proof stuff, so mm-hmm. this was this is phenomenal. Mm. I, I still put this at sub sub hundred proof. I'd say probably ninety. 80, 43 to forty six percent. All right. Let's go to our final one for this segment. And then once we have uh, tasted these, we'll rank the four on our personal uh, you know, taste o meter. Well, I'll tell you what the definitive oh. order is right now. And uh, well you haven't tasted the last oh, one yet. I haven't tasted this in its I number just changed four. my number uh, two's see? not number two's not our bag. See? Oh this is our bag. Oh wow. So we're going beat it again. I haven't even tried oh, this. Oh my god. Mm. This is our bag. You can you can uh, I'm gonna may, I'm gonna go ahead and agree with that because I brought may, our bag. This may uh, send this you is definitely our bag. This may send you over the edge, Alan. This oh, is I, glorious. I took a sip and poured it out. This is right. glorious. So this is this is the This tastes like the hospitals in Italy right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so that was so wrong and so funny. Uh this is this well, you is know like how they got it, right? I, you know what I love though? The art bag is at forty I, I believe the art bag's at which one did I bring? Well, you don't have to say. The bottom line, the bottom line is this is not overproof, but it tastes hotter than the previous one, which is definitely overproof. This yeah. is this, this is, is young really, Ardbeg for sure. This is really the liquid equivalent of standing over a smoking pile of burning peat <laughs> or smoldering Oof. peat. Oof. This say. is the only one I'm not going to dump. So you're, uh, so like, you're digging uh, this. So, you're so the, love it. So the left side of the room is happy. The right sure. side of the room is awkward. Oh, I want to. I want something to scrape my tongue. This is <laughs> yeah. horrible. So, so here's the thing. It's hard to rank these because I like 
I, I like three and four for different reasons. I understand this. And this is all very subjective. So if you had to put these in order, Chris, uh, what well, would well, be what would be your four, three, two, one? I will tell you that uh, three and four are definitively two and one. Two uh, was peated. I don't think it was our bag. I changed my mind. It was definitely some sort of peated whiskey, maybe. I doubt it's Laphroaig, but it's it's more of a mild peat, maybe uh, a mainland peat, a mm-hmm. Balvini peat or something, uh, or a cheaper lower bottom shelf peat. So two, mm-hmm. two is number three. One is number four. One is number four. Yeah, really? yeah. And three was a great, decent bourbon, and and so you make that your number two. Yeah, correct. And four was. I think I'm gonna be number one. I think I'm gonna put it as number one just because I love right. the funky peatiness of it. All right, now I know your list, your ranking is gonna be different. So, oh. uh, <laughs> so three, one, two, four. I would rather have that young that I really didn't enjoy more than either of the two. So things. your favorite was three, three for sure, and so, then one, two, four. Wait, wait, what was mine? What was mine? Uh, it was. I think you said four, three, four, three, two, one. Two, two, one. one. That's correct. Yeah. And Ian, uh, I got four, two, three, one. What was yours? Four, two, three, one. So, so the first one was uh, the the aftertaste was green and it was a little weird. I, it's I don't a good think whiskey, the whiskey, but I think it's going to tasted bad. But it, it left that green kind of aftertaste to it, which, if I'm being critical, that's that was a, a little bit there. Um, the second one, number three, is that sweet round uh, whiskey that we had third. Okay, um, and that was pretty good. Number two for me was the Lafrag. I know this because that's Lafrag. Which and was the Freud, the Freud, the Freud, yeah. Yes, make it make sense. Sure. And then number one was definitely our bag on that. Which so you are our, four two three, three one. one. All right, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna tell you my favorite was actually number three. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and my second favorite was number four, the yeah highly yeah. peated. Uh, and then uh, number three was two. Yep. Yep. And yep, yep. number one was four. So I'm four three one. All right. Two. This is confusing. Let's do this. So me and you are on the same page, once except have, for whether we like for one flip. Yep. Let's do this. Once we have our numbers down, <clears throat> once we know what order we like stuff, instead of calling four three two one and all that other stuff, let's go ahead and find out the names, and then we can call them out by sure. name. Sure. Because I right. think it's a little more confusing if you're just listening to this. All yeah. right. So we've just done that. So Adam, what was the first whiskey we tasted? Hand me the bottle. Uh, the first whiskey, which it'd be all great of if us, Adam didn't know, all of us rated yeah. number yep. four. Cheers. There it is. Yep. yep, and there it is. The Michter's American. Yep. No, that's uh, Ian. You want to show this did, to the camera? Just to, enjoy that uh, whatsoever. Just to make sure we get a good, good shot of that. Now, see, I, but see, I really liked it. It's just that I like the others better. So I liked everything about it except for the aftertaste. To be honest with you. Mm-hmm. All right. All right, Adam. What was whiskey number two? I rated it third. Wait, wait, before he pulls it up, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to officially say it's got to be a lower end peated offering. Okay. So I, more commonly available, co- commonly affordable. I rated it third. You rated it third. third. You rated it. I rated it third as well. Yeah. And you rated it. Yeah. Two. The bells. That yeah, the yeah, bells. Yeah. Wow. So this is. I'm going to say this is going to be the cheapest. Uh, sure. Sure. One that we will try all day. Ian, yep. go ahead. And, yep. Yep. And so, so this is one we we interpreted this as a peated uh, as a, a peated scotch, but it's a blend. So, but it's a blend. Yeah, 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 but there's but it. there's some peat in it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But it is definitely once. So Ardbeg is so. Lafroy and Ardbeg are two of the most aggressive peated offerings. So the moment you taste it, you yeah. know for sure. Right. So the moment I tasted our was it our fourth offering? Our, yeah. Yeah. I knew. I okay. would say it was Ardbeg. I Beg, knew that I was Ardbeg. Like I am yeah. willing to bet anyone in this room fifty dollars that that last thing was was Ardbeg. All right. Uh, the number three whiskey, I believe, we all chose as our number one. It's great, great bourbon. And let's see what that was. Oh, it's oh, Old Taylor. Yeah. No. I did say I did say it was an Old Dusty. Yeah, so this yeah. is a 1980s offering of Old Taylor by National Distillers. So, Alan, you brought this one, did you? Not? I did it. No, I brought no, it. No, you yeah, brought yeah, this yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so, so that's an Old, old Dusty. Taylor. Yeah. And that was phenomenal. So, when you say Old Dusty, what does that mean? I for mean, it was who are... bottled and released at retail in 89. 88 or 89, mm-hmm. I forget. It. It's on the bottom of the glass, but uh, in the if you look at it, actually pull it out, pull it over here if you don't mind. So just a little fun fact for those who, who don't know, but in by 88, 89, you were legally required to add a pregnancy warning on the back of the bottle. Oh. And by 85, most people were using a barcode. So by the f- sheer fact that there's no pregnancy warning, but there is a barcode, it puts you in that range between 85 and 88. Ian, uh, by the way, 
did you just geek out? Because I just totally geeked that out. Was that was totally he knew that. beautiful. That was geeky. awesome, yeah. wasn't it? That he is awesome. a whiskey expert. <laughs> he is. Yeah. This is why we. Uh, uh, this is why we love having you on the so show. So it's a it's a phenomenal offering, and we knew when we tasted it. I I told you I didn't I didn't you realize said it was old and dusty. I, I could taste an old dusty note to it. I, that was just phenomenal. One question about this bottle: What bar did you steal it from? Because oh. it still has the bar spout in the top. <laughs> no, no, no. That's my bar. It's the whiskey social bar spout. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So gotcha. I bought that at auction and I poured it at the event, and that's what's yeah. left of it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. All right, the uh, final one. I rated it second. You rated it last. last. Uh, oh, Ardbeg. I rated it first. You, yeah, you rated it first, and yeah. you rated it uh, first. First, so one, one, four, two, and it is yeah, Ardbeg, Ardbeg ten. Yeah, yeah. Ardbeg ten, indeed. I'm going to pass it over to you, Ian, for the camera. See, this is the part of the tasting that's fun. Is the is the reveal? Well, actually, the part of the tasting that's fun is the tasting, but the reveal is fun <laughs> as well. So, okay, all right. So now we know what those were, uh, and we will come back and uh, be with you once again in the next segment when we will taste four more. And uh, see, I told you, Chris, that this would be fun. This is fun. I told you this would be so, fun. So, just to be clear, who ranked that? You are the only one who ranked number three. Oh no, no, no. Who? Uh, who's this? This is. You? I, we all ranked number three and four, number two, one. Three, one. And we all ranked number one. The um, someone ranked the mixers as four. You and me ranked four as number one, so, and you and Alan ranked three as number one. So here's something very interesting: Mixers, which is a hugely respected brand, right? From who? Well, the bell, <laughs> the, the the bells outdid it. Sure, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That bells is probably a thirteen dollar bottle. There are there are some great offerings from Mixers for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the American whiskey is okay. All right, all right good. There, all right. So I just the, I the just American binge watched billions. By let the me way. go That's ahead. All they drink. Let me go millions. ahead and just they tell paid you. a lot of money for that product. Yep. Yep. B- billions is by the way is incredible. It's a oh, great yeah. show. Let, let me go shows. ahead. The next season. Great show. I don't let know. Let me go ahead and just say, Nickers. I've had some good expressions from them, mm-hmm. and I had th- this bottle of uh, American whiskey is one that I brought, and it's been sitting there a while. Okay, good enough. Uh, and yeah. it's because of that. It's it's it's. It's okay. All right, gentlemen, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and taste four more. And uh, plus, I want to uh, check in with how uh, craft beer is coping with the coronavirus uh, crisis. Uh, so we'll let you know uh, what's happening and what you, as a lover of craft beer, can do to help. I do love craft Smoking beer. Smoking and toasting. By the way, I think we can nail our I think so. That's the right one. Kristen, I may help you. Hey, Kristen, this is B&B, correct? Yes, correct. I just wanted to find out, is the butcher shop open today? Uh, yes, it is. All right, thank you very much. Of course, thank you. Bacon, Bacon baby. baby! Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting, <laughs> and uh, during the break there and the first part of the intro music for this segment, um, Alan verified that the butcher shop is open at B&B on Washington Ave in Houston. So I think all of us are probably stopping there <laughs> for some Chef leave. Tommy's bacon to take home yes. and try to prepare uh, as we, you know, as we uh, do our social distancing, which is important. Uh, guys, for generations in times of stress. By the way, it's it's smoking a toast and uh, and we are so thrilled to have our special guest on the show today. I want to say a quick thank you to uh, Trenton from Oliva Cigars, who was our special he guest was last awesome. week. Who's awesome. He's just fun to hang out with and and always a great guest on the show. Uh, and our, our friends are here today. This is uh, Chris Hart and Alan Denning, our, our buddies. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. We enjoy having by the way, if if you are not checking it out, Chris Hart's show uh, oh, that's right. which is Absolutely awesome whiskey neat. Yeah, uh, is uh, available. Chris, how do people find your show? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I always forget to kind of push that side of things, but uh, yeah, I have a show on ESPN in Houston on ninety seven five FM. Uh, you and can to, listen to it weekly. And it's available whiskey as a neat. podcast. Yep, too. it's yeah. also available on all podcast platforms. The video portions on Facebook and of course YouTube as well, just like what you guys do. And you take kind of a deep dive in, into whiskey. Uh, you cover some other things too, but whiskey's really your primary thing. Right? Yeah. So the t- tagline of the show is spirited conversations with interesting people. We try to sit down with folks that would just be great to listen to for an hour to talk to them. You know, we've had a few guests. You've had some great comedians on. You've You've had had us on. We're awesome. Yeah, we are awesome. (laughs) I have had you guys on, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because every show has those weeks where you go, oh, shit, somebody isn't showing up. i got to call Ian and Chris. Why is it always last minute? (laughs) Yeah, we we were supposed to have TJ Miller on. We were going to actually have Truth Bar, you know, one of the greatest 
uh, barbecue joints in Houston is uh, Truth Barbecue. Mm -hmm. We were going to have them on the show feeding me and TJ Miller this week eating because TJ has a line of hot sauce. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have some hot sauce, some local Houston barbecue. And and then, of course, what do you know, Corona, the company, released a horrible virus that kind of ruined. Yeah, those uh, those beer people. Yeah. Yeah. Those stupid beer people, yeah. yeah. Uh, just a question. Uh, how is coronavirus affecting, you know, putting your show together? Because I know it's got to be harder to get guests to come in, right? Yeah, so uh, I, I can't – I don't think it's appropriate for me to speak on how the station's dealing with things, but it's things are definitely a bit tough. A lot of advertisers have, have you know, pulled out of things currently, but uh, – I don't know. We're going to see how that unfolds. But um, uh, my day job, my work in aviation, it's definitely halted that quite a bit. So I'm not too nervous yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, I think that's where a lot yeah. of people are right now. Yep. Not too nervous, but getting there. So. Getting there for sure. You know, for generations, uh, when things have gotten stressful, beer has offered an outlet, a chance to relax a Booze little bit in general, while you yeah, drink, yeah. yeah, and a chance to socialize. Unfortunately, in these times of social distancing, the relaxing part may still exist, but the socialization uh, is not as big a deal. In fact, um, most of the uh, breweries and, and tap rooms in the Houston area are closed, but most of them are offering purchasing and takeout service. And the, um, the Brewers Association is calling on craft beer lovers that this is the time to step up and support your small local craft breweries especially the kind of guys who don't have shelf space at uh you know at the liquor store at the grocery store who their only revenue right now is going to be from selling uh to go and i don't know about you guys but i'm going to find uh holy <clears throat> roller here in houston and go buy some more of this hazy juicy ipa it was fantastic because uh, this is it's not only is it fantastic but i want to help them out i'll be swinging by our uh, our friends that uh, i can see uh, from my house, the uh, the folks at um, uh, Eighth Wonder. Wonder. Eighth Wonder. Thank <laughs> you. I don't know why I draw a blank sometimes. Uh, so anyway, uh, that that's the thing. Like uh, beer sales are actually not off tremendously during the coronavirus, but sure. the problem is everything's shifting in terms of how people how people get it. I and would imagine it'd be up because people are home. People are home, right? Uh, so right. So they're not out ordering things at their favorite local bar. Uh, but they are home, and and it's uh, it's easier to maybe just grab some and take it home with you. So my encouragement to you, our encouragement as a show, is uh, don't just do that at your local grocery store. Uh, go and uh, go to some of the uh, tap rooms. Swing by. You don't even have to interact with people. You can keep your mask on the whole time. I, I'm pretty sure you can throw money out the window and they'll throw beer in the door. I'm pretty sure that that will work. Yes. That's probably not the way it works. But I'm, I'm just well, and it even out there. the it's the, a wonderful idea though. Yeah. You know, like, why doesn't Houston have the drive-through? Like, you've been through the drive-through beer places. Like, there's yes, some in I lived Austin, in Louisiana. Yeah, we right. do. We do for a little thing. I mean, yeah. the, there's the the wine-based margarita cocktail type thing well, you can do drive-through. I don't mean the ready to drink. I mean like the like you the drive-through liquor store where you just go. There's like, one in Pasadena. Drive your car. Is there really? Yeah. yeah. There's a few. There's a few out there. It's on, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's on nice. Shaver. Well, you know, the governor loosened. Yep. The laws where certain things can be delivered. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you this it, it, you can only order hard liquor and spirits if you order it with food. If you call Whiskey Cake and order a piece of cake, they will not deliver flights. They have. I tried. I tried. <laughs> good well, know. they are. No, uh, no, no. Let, let's mention this. They are delivering a few things, uh, if, if you don't mind me making a, a bit of a statement here. So, uh, Whiskey Cake, I know for sure they're doing a package deal right now for $48. You get something like 30 eggs, two steaks, two sirloins, uh, six hamburger patties, two fully seasoned hens, chickens, nice. uh, and a gallon of milk with two rolls of toilet paper for like 48 bucks. It's a crazy deal. Yeah. I, Are I, you serious? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I kept waiting for you to add some liquor to that. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm not sure on the booze side of things, but I know that there's also, you know, for those of us, I mean, Houston has this incredible bar scene. And uh, those working in the service industry are a bit debilitated because of this whole thing. So yes. there's yeah. actually two charities locally that are fantastic for this. 
Uh, I know for sure that the USBG, uh, the United States Bartenders Guild, has a foundation that you can donate directly to to help those who are in need, and that is the usbgfoundation.networkforgood.com. And, of course, Chris Shepard, the famous local chef, uh, southernsmoke.org. Sh- let's try that again. Southernsmoke.org <laughs> is also uh, helping those in need that work in the service industry. Just, to, you know, car payments, houses, right. that sort of things, until we right. get back up on our feet. I'll tell you, uh, it says a lot about people what their first reaction was when they started to take this more seriously for most people the first reaction was i've got to go stock up on cleaning supplies and toilet paper my first reaction was i need to hit specs sure (laughs) priorities exactly what i did i went and i bought plantation rum i bought some vodka i I made sure i had enough craft beer you know it's you got to have priorities in your life you know that's, when, that's when the zombie point. apocalypse hits, <clears throat> liquor and bullets. Well, you know, and bullets. a lot of people were wondering why why people are stockpiling toilet paper, and there's actually a great answer for that. There was an announcement made a couple of weeks ago that basically said that a lot of our toilet paper is made in China, oh, and we were expecting okay. shortages to come. Right. So, of course, that creates a domino effect. Creates that, a shortage, but yeah, my from what I've read, the toilet paper shortage is real but temporary. And that's what they said. So, Buy a bidet uh, attachment. By the way, what you uh, just said, Alan, about the zombie apocalypse, I will tell you that uh, my wife and I were watching The Walking Dead uh, this weekend, and I, I turned to her and I said, you know, it's not that far off from where we are at this point. So, But I will say this. I have seen all of what, what we're in the 10th season yeah, right now. something like that. I've yeah. seen every episode, watched the last one. It was great. Never seen a single roll of toilet paper no. In any no, episode no. for the entire series. Well, every time podcast. there's a sex scene, I always wonder how horrible that experience is oh, going to be. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just well, all that. No one's seen Everyone good. looks sweaty. But wouldn't it be great, like, if maybe in, like, the last episode when they do the finale, just, like, don't even mention it. Just see Daryl, like, walking out of a door with a roll of toilet paper in his hand. Like, <laughs> like yeah, I need. We've this just in there. rewritten this whole uh, thing. We had plenty. <laughs> this is All how right, it ends. Now. Let's taste some whiskey, guys. Uh, this is our uh, second uh, tasting segment and our first uh, sample. Chris, have you already gone there? I've already gone. <coughs> yeah, I, I tasted it. it. Smells yeah, yeah. good. So it <coughs> reminds me. This is what I like to call. I know that Diageo has cornered the market on the term a classic malt. But there is a fantastic whiskey brand that we all know and love very well, that it works very closely with B&B Butchers, that this reminds me of, and that is William Grant. Right. This mm-hmm. is either Glenfiddich or Balvini, mm-hmm. Balvene. It's, uh, it's a classic example of a perfect single malt uh, that's just very approachable. It sure is delicious. Uh, very delicious. Tons of honey. It's tons of sweetness. friendly. Yeah. Friendly. Um, I like that. I yeah. had one taste of it, and I knew right away that this was a baseline example of what good scotch is. Nice, nice, Alan. Uh, I agree. It's it's got <coughs> so this is where me and Pete disagree with Belvini. Sure. There's a little bit in the blend. I know there is, but it's not off putting. Sure, but this absolutely reminds me I of mean, Belvini Twelve. Th- this may not be Belvini at all, but if it is, it's a. Uh, it, it could be another. There's a few other examples of like baseline examples of Scotch that everyone's familiar with. Mm-hmm. Glenlivet, uh, Belvini. Glenfiddich. These are all like everyone yeah. sees it everywhere. It's on every back bar. I brought this. Yeah. Oh, you know what it is? It's Glen Scotia. Wow. So you know that? Wow. That's yeah. That's like good. that's so good. That's what. That's what. I'm, that's my guess. I'm, oh wow. I mean, if it is, I'm impressed. Yes. Well, it's a I'm, good. It's a good malt. I'm enjoying it. What a great. What a great one to start with uh, for our taste test. This one will be like I, uh, when I taste it. I had no doubt. Like that's what it is. I realize it's our first one, but it is currently. The one to beat. So wow, whatever's oh, in uh, here. Is... Yeah, you know what? I think I just passed you my empty. So I oh. apologize for that. I, was just, I thought I <laughs> me was... and Chris were fixing to drink his backwash. Yeah, I <laughs> thought I was uh, passing you the next whiskey, and instead uh, that may be some uh, a few drops of the peated uh, Ardbeg from earlier. So, uh, all right. So this is sample number two for this segment, and Ian's already done some tasting, so I'll let you start. This is really, really clean compared to the last one too. This is uh wow, no kidding, clean and smooth. Yeah. It's really um, light. Uh, vanilla and honey. Um, I'm going to lean towards this might be your Glen Scotia or your or your Glen Livet. I think this is a Balvini. Think so? Yeah. I mean, I could, be, I could totally be wrong. There's that the, that classic profile of baseline Scotch of just being very honeyed, very bright. Um, yeah, but the last one had more these, malt. That's why I think it's the, the Glen yeah. Scotia. So right, the the first number one had a lot more malt than this. 
this is more that minerality sure. and that very straightforward. You know, sort the, the interesting thing about taste. this is, like, I brought a few bottles, so I can only guess what I brought. I have right. no idea what you guys brought. Right, so and that was that's part, of, we're, the, we're that was part kinda, of the plan. Actually, we're kind of like guessing out uh-huh. there. Like, either I brought it or I have no idea what it is. So we're literally guessing out there, and you guys are at a disadvantage because you have no idea what we brought. Right, right. Alan, I'm not you, thinking so. about it like that. I'm just tasting it. Yeah, I, that's I just, what you're supposed to do. I, this is going to sound. It seems very similar to the first one. But I think the first was better. Yeah, but a little it's like somebody took the first one and 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 watered it down. Not water to open it up. Right. But just But it's just not quite yeah. as full tasting right. as the first There's one. There's also a little brown sugar on the end of this that you don't get that from the first one. That you don't get in one. the first one, yeah. The first one is so malty. That's why I can imagine that would have to be a tough one to beat in this segment for you. Well, I'm liking one over two right now for sure. Yeah. All right. So one and two, and here comes number three. I mean, two's okay. Two's not bad. Two's good. Two's good. Oh. Ooh. The nose on this is pretty good. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's got a nose, oh, yeah. nose of an old uh, bourbon. I think we've got some bourbon. This is, going yeah, here. we're definitely yeah. bourbon, not scotch, right now, because the oak and everything, right? Mm-hmm. Like the oak is what hits my nose immediately. I know what this ah, is. I love the heat. I know what this is. Go ahead, Chris. I, I'm, I'm willing again. I called it in the last segment. I called that at last hard bag. It's definitely overproofed. I know what this is. This is old Granddad this is 114. Hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is old Granddad 114. There was some a couple years ago. Beam has made some bad decision over the last couple years. They talked about ending. The reign of this, oh yeah, and Never re-releasing thought. a new, more expensive product. And he also talked about jumping the price from Booker's from fifty dollars to a hundred dollars. They ended up backpedaling after the announcement. They backpedaled down to seventy-five dollars, so only a fifty percent raise versus a hundred percent raise. This is old Granddad one fourteen, one hundred percent. It is, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's delicious. The nose is fantastic, but it is hot on that. Back it's end. a good yeah, whiskey, but it's it. very hot. I, just oh, I love the say, heat on the back end. Just want to say, this is why you ask a whiskey expert. To come on your show, right? Well, it was so funny because there was a when that happened, there was a run on Old Granddad. Well, people were clearing shelves. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I was one of them. I went out and bought like four bottles, and that and was well before the coronavirus. So. Yeah, well before, yeah. and and of course, then they didn't, and now you can pretty readily. You know why it spreads so? Nah, it's probably insensitive. I'll just say I'll it. Save come it. on, <laughs> <laughs> don't be scared. I was going to say, you know why it spread so fast through Italy is because, you know, Mamma Mia. <laughs> so you're not supposed to touch your face. Yeah, right. <laughs> See, this is why Chris, I think, enjoys being on our show. Because I get to just let loose a little bit. He can just, like, say yeah. whatever he wants to say. He doesn't care say. about your sponsors. Right, right. That's yeah. exactly he only cares right. about his own. That's exactly right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, you know, our sponsors close right now. The more I drink right this now, last so. one, the more I like it. You know, I, oh, would, it's good. I, I agree it's with good. you there, Ian. This, this really, uh, at first I liked it, but, like, Two three sips in, I'm like, I really like. We this. should do a blind one day with some some. It's it, it's got to be in the twenty dollar range, mm-hmm. and I've got probably six phenomenal bourbons in that twenty dollar range. Early times, hundred proof, Wild Turkey one hundred one, uh, Old Granddad. There's a couple of like fantastic bottles that's worth blinding to see what your favorite. So is. the Old Granddad that you're thinking this is, what does that retail for? Old Granddad one fourteen, probably twenty four. Yeah, that's great. That's it's great. it's no mellow corn, but it's standard. Uh, I dig it. <laughs> All right, we ready to try the yep. uh, fourth one of I this. I hate to uh, dump segment. this one, but that's yeah. exactly what that is. Well, there's more whiskey coming, so yeah, this is. Oh, you got something to do later more. today? By the way, or are you oh, just going to go? Or are you just going to go for this the? Is. Uh, oh, hold on. You got oh, something to do geez. later today, or are you just going to go Adam for the Matt Dillon? Adam doesn't like the I, end. Apparently, I have two meetings. That's why I dumped. Yeah, I've got a meeting right after this and a meeting at five. Oh, that that's oh genius of planning on your part. This, you know what this is. Yeah. Without ever tasting it. Lafroy? That knows it's Lafroy. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I haven't tasted it. I wrote it down. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Oh, everything about that is gorgeous. I'm not sure that uh, that Alan's even going to taste this one. He may just I'll smell it, it and it's pour it. Gone. Mm. Ian, your thoughts, sir. I love peated whiskey. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> I'm Chris? willing to bet the quarter cask or the triple wood. I'm not quite sure. Maybe the 10 year. That's fantastic. Everything about that is glorious. Perfect example of how great peated scotch is. That is, for sure, Lafroy. Mm. I I think it's Lafroy too, mm. but mostly I think it's Lafroy because 
we already know that the Ardbeg was in the last segment, so that helps me like narrow it down because I'm I'm more of a, a novice with the peated stuff. This is for for peated whiskey. This is quite good, which is kind of again, it's kind of like Ian qualifying an IPA. Uh, this is this is really well. Delicious. They use a lot of old cherry barrels. Uh, Lagavulin's big on that as well. The balance on this peated whiskey, like Ardbeg, is huge. Pete, like Ardbeg is legendary. One of the mo- more peated things that you're mm. going to get. Right. So it's kind of an extreme version of it. That's like buying a dogfish head of something. Right, a dogfish um, head of something. Yeah. So like that, that's really the good. Lafrag, though, it's like the Internet of Things, the dogfish yes. head of something. The uh, the Lafrag though generally has a little more balance and and clarity in the in the overall taste profile. That's not just. Well, well, I'm using the delicious. IPA to kill my palate from what I just drank, <laughs> and I literally just took a small sip. Yeah, everything about that has got that. It's got that sweet underlying tone of, of some sort of X wood, X whether that be X bourbon, yeah, X yeah. sherry, X uh, port. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, let's uh, let's rank them up. Alan, I think you're uh, I think you're already started, so we'll start. Oh, with I you. did it. Oh, the whatever the third. So, one. what was your favorite? Let's do it that way. Oh, number three. Number number three, three was your favorite. Yeah, the heat okay. of that bourbon was great. Okay, and then number one, the the malted that we talked about, and then two and and four. Okay, so you're um, so in order. Then you went. Well, let's three, one, two, four. Is that right? Let's yeah. let's let's put the names out there instead of just tossing numbers out. Okay. All right, but I, I want to make sure we've all ranked first. You, okay. so you guys have locked we in all your ranks. I, I've locked in my ranks. All right, my ranks so, are written down. So Adam, let's let's we see. But isn't this more fun though, if everybody's made their comments and then we reveal? But but the thing is, like we just tried four and we're going two, one, three, four, four, two. Three one and three, all. That. One, like, two, no four. one's getting all that. All right, like, Adam, I figured Adam, if we let's, can... let's go ahead and reveal then. What, okay. Yeah, what, so was, what was number one? Watch what their hands are doing. Put your pins down. Right. Right. Test, gotcha, test gotcha. is over. Mm-hmm. All right. You've got your ranks. <laughs> what then, was number one? Balvini. 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 Ah, Caribbean you guys cask. Called it. Yeah. Called it. Fourteen. Called Caribbean it. cask. Fourteen. Yeah. Nice job there, Chris. I didn't nice get the show. sweetness. Did the second your Glen Scotia. Ian, show the, that to the the second, You're probably right. The second your Glen Scotia. Yeah, now, Ian, you really thought this was the Glen Scotia. I really thought it was yeah. the Glen Scotia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. No, I, so I, that was number one. Just so you know, I've got four, three, one, two, with one being the the Bal, or sorry, one being Balvini, which I called it mm-hmm. the, which is my third place out of the t- four. Two, the last place is what's coming up, which is his Glen Scotia. Now it wasn't bad by any means, but let, but let, four and three were so great that let, let's see if he's right. Number whiskey number two in this segment was oh, oh no oh it was wow. the Glenfiddich uh, yeah. IPA cast nice Glenfiddich IPA. Now you see, this is one of those things that it's a good thing that I didn't know this because had I known this, I would have automatically rated it higher. Because I have been loving that sure. bottle oh, of whiskey great. for so oh, long. Oh, it's a great bottle. Yeah, there's nothing oh. wrong with it. You, does that have that tax stamp on it? It might. You're not supposed to show that. <laughs> it's, it's blacked out. There you go. No one knows where it came from. Yeah, that's right. Um, but definitely nothing to see here. Lisa doesn't have a bar, a pour spout in the top. So. Sure. So the All right, that was I, number two. I fully expected that to probably be Glen Livet. I had or your really? Glen Scotia. It's yeah. kind of the. I kind of expected it to be that. Kind of a actually. standard we, daily. We, you knew it was a Glen. Yeah, I knew it was a Glen. All right, Alan, uh, Adam, number three. Old Granddad, one fourteen, hundred percent. Show me that bottle. Pull it out. Oh! Which one is that? That's that's Wade's Knob Creek pick. Oh, Knob yeah, Creek so, single barrel reserve. So guys. that's that's a hundred and twenty proof Knob Creek pick. It's still high proof. It's, yeah, high proof. Yeah, and that's Wade's pick. The the uh, Gulf Coast Bourbon Maniacs. Uh, it's a phenomenal. Oh, look, and it has a whiskey peat sticker yeah, on the back. Yeah, yeah. Well, wow. I was wrong. So, what did you think it was? You thought it was. I uh, thought it was old Granddad 114. It's yeah. delicious. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, Adam, final bottle. Lafroig. The peat. It's got to be Lafroig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lafroig. Yep. Uh, cast strength. It's a Lafroig 10 year uh, cast strength. Ian, you want to show that oh. one to the camera? All right, gentlemen, let's. Uh, so, that's the Lafroig. So, two out of four is not bad. Yeah. I'll take it. Uh, what was number? What was the first whiskey that was the Balvenie, right? Yeah, yeah. Balvenie. I've got that four, three, one, two. What, what was the Balvenie? Uh, what year was it? Uh, in fourteen-year Caribbean cast. That was the fourteen-year 14 14 Caribbean cast. All right, and Caribbean, the s- Caribbean. The second one was uh, the was the Ardbeg. Ard- no, 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 sorry. My lie. The um, IPA cast. The IPA cast. And then the third one was the Knob Creek. 
the Knob Creek. And Correct. The, uh, yeah. All right. Um, your uh, your rankings, Chris. Four three one two. Yeah. Four three one yeah. two. So Cast Strength Lafroig is hard to beat. You Cast Strength Lafroig was your number one. Yep. Uh, the the uh, Knob Creek was your number two. Yep. That was Wade Woodard's pick. The Knob Bal- Creek. The Balvini was your. Uh, the Balvini fourteen was your number three, and at number four was the um, the. Uh, I'm sorry. The IPA cast guess right. Correct. That's correct. Am I getting that right, Ian? Uh, call him by name. I no, got number, two, number I got four. Two four three one, which equals. Um, uh, my favorite was the Balvenie. Mm-hmm. You said two, right? Two. Oh, yeah. sorry, so my, so your favorite is the IPA cast Glenfiddich. Sorry, the Glenfiddich IPA cast. Then number four, the Freug. Wait, I'm you confusing confused, myself. Dude. I'm doing a two. Yep. What was your number one? Oh, okay. Hold on a second. Now I figured it out. Okay, my number one was Lafroy. I'm looking at my numbers backwards. Mm-hmm. Okay. Number two? Then my number two was the Balvenie. My okay. number three was the Knob Creek, and number four was the Glen. Uh, the Glen. Okay. Uh, I, I count them backwards because I grew up listening to Casey Kasem, and that's the way you do things. <laughs> uh, my number four, uh, and this surprises the hell out of me, was the uh, Glenfiddich uh, IPA cast because that's – I would have told you that's one of my favorite whiskeys. Uh, so interesting that out of this batch of four, it wound up in fourth place. Uh, third for me was the Knob Creek. <clears throat> Second for me was the Lafroy. And number one for me was the Balvenie 14. That was just, that's just a fantastic yep. whiskey. Uh, that was so. good. All right, so we all did an interestingly different ranking that time, which I think is, is infinitely more interesting than if we all rank things the same. So we will take a break, and we'll be back for our next round of tasting. Uh, there's two more rounds, and then in the end, at the end of the show, we'll all choose what we thought was the best overall, um, let's say our top five out of the whole day. So uh, this should be fun. It's smoking and Toasting, and we're back for segment four in just a moment. I wrote my numbers backwards. That's why I was like... <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Smoking and Toasting, show number 178, our first ever whiskey blind taste test. Show number 178, of course, of the uh, program puts us halfway to 200. So we're halfway very excited. To 200. Very oh. excited about that. This is whiskey blind taste test, not blind whiskey taste test. Did I? That's different. Did I mess that up? No, I just wanted oh. to be distinctive about it. So, that. guys, let me ask you this. If we do this for rum or tequila, are you in? All, all for it. All oh, for it? Okay. Oh. Tequila, probably not. Oh, see? Yeah. The only one I the only tequila that I have found that I really like and Frank Fernandez turned me on to it Ugh. was the the uh, Cuervo La Familia. Well, that's the best. It's, yeah, it's the best. Uh, the tequila rest of in the, the world. tequilas, I'm not. I'm, I'm it's not the best a, tequila in the world. But rum, I'm in. But there are other great ones. So, all right, make well, Chris do we a may, gin. We one. may we may try this. This, this, this is I, I I like this Maybe format. Maybe we get Frank in for things. that one, huh? I Maybe like we see format. about getting Frank. Yeah, in Frank would probably really dig that. Yeah, Frank would uh, would be a good guest for that. I would think. Uh, so there's a number of distilleries uh, doing this around the country now in the wake of the coronavirus, uh, but we want to give our props locally here where we are based. Uh, to Gulf Coast Distillers, mm-hmm. who have repurposed one of their uh, production and bottling lines uh, to make hand sanitizer, yeah. and it's happening at a lot of distilleries around the country actually now. That's awesome. It, it's a it's a huge shortage of hand sanitizer because you cannot find it on grocery store shelves, uh, and in Houston, uh, Gulf Coast Distillers is making C4U hand sanitizer, and they say it could make its way into local retailers as early as the next couple of days. Wow, so nice. That, so it's really, really exciting. Um, obviously, as concerns over all of this have grown, uh, they just figured out it was a great way to jump in and, and I, do some stuff. I didn't realize until a couple of days ago that it was against TABC guidelines or whatever for for liquor distributors federally to, yeah federally for TTB, them to use yeah. their trucks but they waived that yeah they couldn't they couldn't like all the stuff we needed in grocery stores they couldn't use those trucks very interesting but they changed it that's um out of my head three oh, that's right yes yeah, so, so all right gentlemen we are here for segment number 4 of the show which means we have four more whiskeys to taste and let's start with number this is one. much more subtle on the nose immediately mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dude mm-hmm. i get a weird Smell. I like get tang. Tang is in what the astronauts drink. Yeah, 
I mean, it, on the nose. It's this is like a cinnamon bomb. Yes, it is. And it. And with, I know what you're talking about with the tang. There's something in there that you're not expecting to taste right. in a whiskey. Uh, at least that's my take. There's yeah. something on the aftertaste. Chris? I think it's scotch. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. hmm. Yeah, it's not bourbon. Maybe like a, a sherry. There's a, a bit of hotness there that mm-hmm. makes me think if it's a, a younger offering. I'm going to say... We talked about Glenlivet at the last line. Something kind of a base core lineup with like a sherry finish or a sherry, some there's sort of wine influence. Yeah, there's definitely a wine influence going on here. Ian? You think it's scotch, really? I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I if that's too. whiskey, I'm, if that's bourbon, I'm color me impressed. You're in the wrong. Yeah, it's... um. Yeah, that's scotch. I like it. Is this La Santa? Mm, no. Maybe. What a great guess. Regardless, that's a phenomenal guess. Ian immediately said no, though. No. It's not a Santa. It's did, too cinnamon for that. There's, there's too much cinnamon. It is this. very, very cinnamon. cinnamon. Yeah. Listen, guys, I don't know yeah. how to say this. The Santa's but, uh, 12 years old. This is younger. I don't mm-hmm. know how to say this, but uh, cinnamon. 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 Anyway, yeah, this has a lot of cinnamon in it. Like, and that's like almost the entire aftertaste that I get on this is All very right. cinnamon. Very malty up front, very round. I, I enjoy it. I'd like to thank yeah. uh, Adam, by the way, our producer, who is. Uh, Normally on the wheels of steel, who today is our bartender. Cinnamon so and caramel. Is, uh, I've been totally watching that. Doing he's doing board. squats like nobody's business, <laughs> having to go underneath yeah, the chair. He's trying to keep well, it low. He's, he's, I can't trying to see keep, yeah, he's trying to keep the uh, the whiskey out of sight so that we don't necessarily know Cheat. what's coming. So uh, yeah. so I liked that, but it, it was one of the stranger things, I think, that we've tasted today. Yeah, I'm going to say that's palate, a, right? a, a daily drinker, like a very affordable, approachable, nothing special, not mm-hmm. nothing rare, just... Like a blended something some, or other? Some, you uh, think well, rather, some, than a, rather than a scotch, huh? No, 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 no. I think it's a scotch. And, and by the way, blends can be scotches as well. Of course, yes. So I think you hit the nail on the head. I think Lasanta is a great guess. But it's it feels, not Lasanta. But, but it feels younger, like a Glenlivet or Glenn a... is convinced it's, it's not Lasanta. Yeah. All right, here's number yeah. two. All right, let me just put this We may be back to bourbon here. I don't know if it's the influence of the last one. This has almost a soapy kind of smell. I guess I should put it by. See, I'm, I, I know what you're saying, but I, what I'm picking up on is the malt and the caramel. Oh, this is delicious. Oh, the flavor is outstanding. Oh, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. Mm. <laughs> you're such a. No, you want my opinion is, or not? This no. is good. <laughs> I'm not sold on this. All right, Chris, tell us why. It reminds me of. Uh, remember your obsession a few this years has ago even more with uh, in it, though. Mm-hmm. that farm, that farm bourbon. What's the name of that? Oh, Calame. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of kind of a younger, but yeah. but then finished in something to kind of cover up right, the young the right. youth. I'm gonna put this. This is definitely not as good as the first one. I'm gonna. This is number two. I'm gonna put it after, in our current rankings. This feels like a younger sourced bourbon that's been finished in something I to c- cover up the youth. <clears throat> I could see it as a as a sourced, but I like the heat. You, you Calame, dug, Calame. You dug it though. Oh, I dig it. Yeah. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's just not. It's yeah. not great. Um, you know, my first few sips, I liked it, but the more I drink it, I I'm questionable on it. But I'm, but I just also am trying to like rinse now, my palate. Now, let me just ask you this. Is Chris Hart impacting your thoughts at all? Because he is an expert. I'm God, trying not to God let that happen, it. but here's the thing. like, This is so <laughs> cinnamon compared to the last one. Like, I, I get so much. Listen, guys, I don't know how to say this, but uh, cinnamon. Cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. He gets worse at it as the show goes anyway, on. Anyway, yeah. the bottom line is this has, like, the first one we tried was a cinnamon bomb. This one is, like. This tastes almost like a like the bad offering from Bowman. Bowman has a lower shelf small batch offering that's just not. No, I don't good. think it's. I I, I don't no. think it's that bad. I, I'm not not enjoying it. Well, I you just, loved it first sip. You my were first like, this sip was really good. good. Get it's, it's, it's very Get cinnamony. Call him on that. I'm waiting for Chris to shit on one of these. That this is garbage, and it'd be one of the biggest spots not, of the social. That's not, <laughs> I'm actually a little surprised Chris agreed to come on for that very reason. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, no, listen, and, I, I, and I don't mean that negatively. I'm just saying. There's always that risk that you could say, yeah, I didn't really like that, sure. and it's a big sponsor of the show. Uh, there was someone very prominent that I had posted a negative review of in HBS that had nothing to do with the social, nothing to do with my podcast. 
and they were very furious that I was not happy with one of their offerings, even though I had supported all their other offerings. I just didn't like one thing from them. And while, t I mean, uh, this brand got very upset that <laughs> I, I wasn't very happy with it, yeah. Walt? Did you back. say Walt? I'm close. Anyway, <laughs> Walt. Yeah. I don't Ergy. Know. Anyway. I don't know. Very, I, don't. I think you <clears throat> figured it out. By the way, uh, I w will mention when we were talking about brands that can get upset with you and what have you, I, I will just mention that we were going to be tasting uh, some Yellow Rose today, but apparently they are a no show. It so, didn't show up. Yeah, they didn't make it. But this was come. Oh, man. Yeah, so, yeah Don so Aiken made a comment earlier. He <clears throat> said he got bumped. Yeah. yeah. He said, this is who I got bumped for? Yeah. These guys? Well, we're way more important than he is. <laughs> but we so, love you, Donald. So uh, I don't I don't know. Uh, I like so the first one better than the second one. You're um, fine. So you do, really. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Now, but see, the second one is more cinnamon see, bomb. I'm just going to hold you to this, though. Your first reaction was you loved this. Yes. Well, it had a it has a great big like cinnamon malty profile like to it. Okay. And, and I don't not like it, but I like the first one better than the second one. Right. Um, I, I don't know. I liked it. All right. Alan, yeah. your take on this? Oh, I way dig number two. Way dig number, number two. Right. Yeah, no, I like it reminds me of A.J. Bowman. Yeah. The, the this shittier. smells amazing. All right, here's number three. Butterscotch. And, yeah, this oh, smells way better. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ian, we'll go to you first. Uh, you know, you might have said it, and that brought it to my uh, face, but uh, butterscotch, mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. like yeah. butterscotch. That buttery, like yeah, the mouthfeel too is very, uh, very smooth and very, yep, like okay. this. Uh -huh. Well, there's heat in the initial taste, but I don't get it on the back end. But it's, it's just butterscotch candy. It's amazing. This tastes like I wild really turkey. Like I have no idea what this is, but I like it. Wt tastes like wild turkey. Yeah. Is it that yeah. forgiven that you brought earlier? No, no, that no, was that was uh, rare. That's breed. more chocolatey, isn't it? That was it? rare breed. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. as much butterscotch. Or rare breed. No, nope. and I don't think I gave him that bottle. I don't no. think you did. I did All not. Right. No. All right. All right. Uh, I like this a lot. I, yeah, I can't good. even really tell you why, but this I like is it a lot. much lighter than the last one, um, and buttery. Mm-hmm. I'm digging it. All right, let's go one more for this segment. There's almost no heat on this one too. You're right. There's not a lot of heat. No, it was on the what I did get was on the front end. Yep, uh, I you thought it, I thought that was delicious. Oh, you got it. I don't know if we're gonna make it through five segments, guys. But Why not? No. We'll just do our best. Don't be scared. Is this three or four? Thought this we were doing. Four. Thought we were four. doing seven segments today. Yeah, <laughs> we may be before this is all said and done. Okay. Right. The last one was so strong that this one I almost get no nose. I have no nose whatsoever on this. Yeah, yeah. It's not just me. It's just very Agreed. much watered down. Yeah. But you know what? It's really delicious in a sort of a clean mineral water sort of a way. All right, I've got my definitive lineup for sure. Is this Tapa Chico? <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree, though. This this actually has a little heat, too, on the back end. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Like, surprisingly Sneaks enough, back up on you. Yeah. about about two-thirds of the way back, you get the heat. Like almost This is an 80-proof uh, lower shelf, bottom shelf bottle for sure. 80-proof bottom shelf drinker. Ah, I don't like what it does on the retrohale. It's a little burny on the mm. retrohale. All right. Uh, guys, make your ratings, and we will and lock them in. One, three, two, four. One, three, two, four. Ian, just give me your numbers, and then we'll reveal. I'm gonna go one, probably the same thing. One, three, two, four. Actually, Alan, three, two, one, four. And I'm going two, three, one, four. So uh, hold Adam, on, let's hold do on, the hold reveal. On. One, three, two, four. And what was yours? Three, two, one, four. Three, two, one, four. And what was yours? Two, three, one, I'm four. I'm two, three, one, four. Yes. Interesting, interesting. All right, Adam, let's see what we've got here. The first one, which I ranked two, you ranked uh, third. Third, and Chris ranked. Well, you guys both ranked them third. Uh, no, I, I ranked, I ran, the first one I ranked second. I thought you said two, three, one, four. Two, three, one, four. Yeah, the first one I ranked second. That's third. No. Two, three, one, four. Two, That's three. That's why these right. numbers are so confusing. All right, all right. Okay. Two three the, one four. One's the third number you just said. All right, two three one four. But yeah. Bottle number one, I ranked two. But, that's, but that's what, what we're referring to. When we refer to bottle two three one four refers to bottle numbers. Right. Somebody's been. Drinking. So then one is number three for you. My am, am I not here? Yeah, yes. My right. favorite. <laughs> I'm right. My favorite of that group was number three. But we're about to reveal bottle number one. Sure. Which I said, ranked second. 
Okay. What and was your you bottle? What was your bottle order? Third. Somebody. My bottle drinking. order was two, yeah. two, three, one, four. Two, three, one, four. Okay, that means your number one bottle was number two. Your number two bottle was number three. No, no. Two, three, one, four. Two, three, one, four is how I ranked them. Yes, but ranking what? <laughs> oh, you're looking at this backwards. You're looking at bottle numbers. If it, right, I, I'm going by bottle number. If I'm going by how I ranked them, it would be three, one, two, four. Three, one, two, four. If, three, one, if you're going by how I ranked them. Three, one, That's two, three, you, one. Now you this see is, why no, this is we've made, we've made Ian's point. All right, so let's just do it this <laughs> yes, way. Okay. This is bottle number one. Okay. I ranked it second. You ranked it third. Third. You ranked it uh, first. First. And Ian ranked first. it first. First. Yeah. So one, one, three, two. Glen Scotia. And there there you go. Scotia. You got there your Glen Scotia. Go. Right. There we go. It's the Glen Scotia double cask single malt. And Ian, I think that one may have come from your whiskey collection. Oh, this not? is hilarious. Who's on first? <laughs> Third uh, base. Yes, yes. Woo. That's why this is. Uh, that's why you should not try this at home, or you should try this at home <laughs> yeah. during the coronavirus pandemic. Look, look, and don't we're drive. doing this so that you don't have to. Right, but you can if you want. That's the good news. All right, bottle number two. I ranked it third. I ranked it second. You ranked it second. Chris? I ranked it third, and so did he. Third and third. We actually so have the same profile. On threes and a two, and the second bottle oh, is oh, oh the old wow. granddad. Oh, granddad. You were so convinced we had this I in the was last so segment. So yes. convinced. All right, so you can show that one to the camera if you don't mind. Number one, uh, fourteen, old granddad. Number two, I ranked third. All right. uh, number three, bottle number three, coming up. I ranked it number one. You ranked it. I ranked it number one. Number one, Chris. No, number two. Number two, and Ian. Number two. Ah, number two. We actually ended up uh, the same. Old barrel. Taylor single barrel. Old Taylor single barrel. This was yours. Uh, yes. You brought this, didn't you? Uh, great, Alan? great bottle. Great yeah. bottle. Uh, Colonel E. H. Taylor single barrel, first and only. I ranked this number one. Uh, what can you tell us about this? It's an allocated product from yeah. E. H. From, uh, <laughs> from Buffalo Trace. Trace. Yeah, yeah. I'm not familiar <laughs> with it at all. So yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm Thrilled to have been able to, ta to taste it. Yeah. So, and it's funny, we all ranked this next bottle our last bottle. Yeah. So, this was number four for all, <clears throat> all four of us. Yeah. Hopefully, it's uh, not a big sponsor. Uh, <laughs> no. I don't care if it is. Fuck you. <laughs> and it is. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, wow. All right. So, here's the crazy oh, thing we reviewed this is the Jameson's Blender's Dog. We reviewed this. This shows you how subjective this can all be. Because we reviewed this last week on the show. Very highly. And we loved it. Sure. Like, we went wow. on and on about it. It was so delicious. What's the proof and on that? And yet it uh, it ranked See? out. This is a 43% uh, 86 proof. Uh, but this is the Jamerson's uh, Blender Series. And this is done by head blender Billy Layton. Um, it's triple distilled, as most Irish whiskey is, I guess. Uh, but this, man, we did an Irish whiskey show last week. And this was our favorite of the whole show. Yes, true. We sampled a number wow. of Irish whiskeys, a number of good ones. Did y'all have McGregor's on? So this is no, we didn't have McGregor's, <laughs> uh, but we did. We did have uh, uh, quite a few, quite a few different whiskeys. Oh, Ian, help me out here. We loved this last. Yeah, week. we did. We actually raved about it. That's why these blind test tests think, to me are so interesting. Well, so not only that, let's talk about the blind taste test for just a second, okay? So the blind taste test means you're not drinking the label, right? So right. You get to try it without the preconception of how much it costs. You get to try it without the preconception of, but everything you try before does have an influence on it. And what's sure. interesting about this is, uh, and I'm not trying to defend us necessarily. Where did it go? Oh yeah, there it is. Okay, I'm not trying to necessarily defend us with that, but we were drinking uh, nothing but Irish whiskeys next week, and we or last week, and we picked this as uh, probably our favorite out mm -hmm. of all of them. I think it was a clear favorite. Yeah. Uh, easily, and I remember even like pouring an extra glass at the end of the show. And what's interesting about that is uh, how much the previous whiskeys influence. So I think one of the mistakes we may be making, and it's a happy mistake, and we can keep making it because it's awesome, is that we're drinking so many whiskeys today. Right. And and this is and certainly influenced. I mean, the everything is going to influence I, the palate. I rated that four out of four, but the one we had just prior to it, I ranked number one. So. That is going to have an an impact, I think, on the palate and how you're how you're doing things. So. Sure, and right. that E. H. Taylor is going to be a lot hotter than that Jameson. So. Yes, for sure. All right, so our final segment is coming up. We'll taste four more whiskeys, and then we will do our um, our picks for the uh, whiskeys of the day. Is this our 
extra segment? No, no? this is segment segment number five coming up, and uh, we'll do an extra segment where we'll be uh, sitting around drinking the Amrut single malt that uh, Chris brought. So, oh, is that nice. the sherry cask? Yes, it is. Uh, that's really good. We'll be right back. It's smoking and toasting. Show number one seventy eight. Halfway to two hundred. <clears throat> How is this? <laughs> In the beginning, I was one seventy eight, halfway to two hundred. Don't go. A smooth operation. We've been. Welcome back, my friends. It's smoking and toasting. Um, you know, it's uh, show number one hundred seventy eight, and we are. Uh, so in the break, Alan asked, "How is that halfway to 200? Which um, you know, reminds me of the fact that my wife and I had this conversation uh, this week, Ian, about how you and I both enjoy when you take a really bad joke and just keep repeating it. It gets funnier every time. It gets time. funnier as it goes. See, my wife doesn't see it that way. It gets less and less funny for her. If you put but it on me, a graph, actually. For me, it gets funnier and funnier. So what happens is it starts out funny, yeah. especially if no one else gets it. That's kind of funny. Right, right. And then it dips down the next few times you tell it, but then it starts to ramp up. It's wonderful curve. every yes. time you tell it after that, it's mm-hmm. funnier. Yep. That's no, it's like your mom right. jokes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. No, I, I remember. You say your mom. I was just thinking your mom's house. The mm-hmm. They've had some ongoing jokes, like him talking about the, the length of the intro. Oh sure. Oh, and, and that's like it, they ran it into the ground. I was right. the I stopped listening of the to the pod- intro to your mom. The music. There's a podcast, a very popular podcast called Your Mom's House. And Sorry, they, my my response was a joke. I oh, gotcha. I got it. I, I was yeah. I was right there with you. My wife is watching, guys. Shout uh, out to Molly. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Molly. Hey, Molly. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, none of that stuff we said we really meant. I promise. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I hope dinner's warm, <laughs> you know, or we, else we are. Yeah. <laughs> Why does it take so long to get to your mom's house? Yeah. It's the line. Uh, oh. See, there you go. There you go. <laughs> How dare you? Yes. Uh, we have uh, our two like favorite guests in the world are on the show with us. Uh, Christopher Hart, of course, the whiskey expert, and Alan Denny, who runs one of the coolest establishments in the greater Houston Galveston area, which Jeez. is the Galveston Island Cigar. Our lounge. How's it going down there? Oh man, it's going great. Yeah, uh, you know we're bringing new stuff in all the time, gaining members all the time. It's, uh, it's your blast. humidor has been expanding, hasn't it? It has, yeah. dude. Yeah, okay, I love that. The humidor is awesome, but the deck. even Alan is pretty okay. But that deck, most yeah. of the deck time. is pretty. Yeah. But that back deck, it's like Ed, that's a wonder. Yeah, like <coughs> if you're to there, behold. if you're there, like if you're in Galveston, even if you don't smoke cigars. Go in there and buy a cigar and go stand out on the deck and yeah. watch sunset. It is amazing. Buy a cigar, and if you don't want to smoke it, you can give it to Alan. He'll smoke it for you. I will. That's right. And you'll I'll enjoy. let you watch. He's amazing like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just so, like, I don't know. I I almost feel like a part of it somehow, like being able to, to like, cheer you on as you do this thing down there. It's Man. so cool. It's y'all's world. I'm just living in it. Well, you know, yeah. All yes, I'll... but you're the guy with the cigar, so <laughs> that makes you one of the most <clears throat> important guys in the world, you know? you know? Do you guys ever think to yourself, oh, my gosh, I have to taste another whiskey and I'm just tired of this? No. I never not think that yeah, either. Yeah, no. <laughs> not I once. Hadn't, hadn't thought of that at all. Uh, <laughs> so speaking of whiskey, uh, we are into our fifth and final segment here, so we have four more whiskeys to taste, oh. and here comes the first one. Chris, you have a look on your face, so go. Yeah, I haven't tasted it yet. Oh. I just smelled it. Okay. That that is definitely that bean decanter I brought. Okay, That's so you old... brought a beautiful decanter of whiskey. Yep, from 19... I, I don't know. The, I, I want to say it's late 80s. There's... So is the whiskey in it what was originally in it? Yeah, or is it something yeah you put 175 in it? months old back then. Fun fact, uh, they couldn't sell whiskey fast enough. So uh, 10-year-old whiskey didn't sound good. So what they would do is they'd list it in months oh. as a selling point. Oh, 175 months. So the number was bigger. Yeah, it's 175 this months. This is sounds... stupidly smooth. Yeah, yeah. and mm. the, and there's a particular what does smooth note. Tastes like it tastes like tastes like you. this. <laughs> no, it's it so deliciousness. <laughs> but there's this there's this particular note in Old Dusty Beam. A lot of Old Dusty's period that kind of smells like glue, Old Elmer's glue. Wow, I wouldn't have uh, thought that, but and, yeah. And that without even tasting it, I am willing to, have to bet. A horse. So I mean I've gotten a few right so far, but I'm willing to bet this is that old beam decanter that that our buddy Wheels of Steel has. Yeah. Have. This I, I have no idea what it is, but it's stupidly smooth. Like this is delicious. So I was gonna say smooth being a good thing in this case, right? Oh yeah, yeah. This is smooth, delicious malt. Yeah, like it's very big malt round forward. malt. 
Uh, what's funny about it is it, it doesn't have a lot of uh, oaky or barrel flavors. No, nope, it sure doesn't. That you expect a lot of. So he f- wrote down stupid smooth and spelled it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much he loves it. He spelled it with two O's. How's he, that? What smooth has two O's? No, it's stupid smooth. <laughs> it's not stupid smooth. It's oh, that's stupid a word. Smooth. That's stupid a word. That's smooth. that's lingo. What's the do you know what the proof is on the decanter? Uh, like, I'm willing to bet 86, give or take. Not only is stupid with two <laughs> O's, uh, is that lingo? No, it's but, stupid. Look, look right, I'll put it exactly. right there. Stupid that's what I'm it, it's, it's lingo. It, it, it's legit. And then the other thing that's And then I obviously misspelled smooth because I used a TH, so then I respelled it with a V. Well, I was stupid just about to smooth. say, that, that's how it's supposed to be. Because that's smooth. what I thought he was talking it's about. Smooth, yeah. Like yeah. smooth jazz. Yeah, I would bet my marriage that that is the B <laughs> decanter. Oh, <laughs> he's going yeah. on. And, yeah. and your wife is watching, so I mean, this I, is good. I, I doubt she's watching can, this. Can long. I have her phone number? <laughs> Dude, I will be texting her um, immediately yeah. if it's not. You <laughs> stay away from her. <laughs> You're the only one I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so married. He doesn't even care. He's this like, is, whatever. <laughs> this is an important thing. All right. That was good. I will say that. That was good. Uh, that was uh, whiskey number one. Here comes whiskey number two. Are you going to do the Matt Dillon at the end of this, by the way? I am not going to do I've heard that, that, that you've all. done a Matt My Dillon. My wife says she's still time. watching. God no, damn it. Okay, good, good to know. Uh, <laughs> I for so, sure thought it was 30 seconds. So not to, not to ask you this question in front of your wife, but have you ever, like, cheated on her? <laughs> 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 You're like, not to ask you in front of your wife, but you hit her. <laughs> uh, no, not to ask you in front of your wife, but have you ever done the Matt Dillon? Uh, yeah, I did it at that... Uh, the Isla tasting. Yeah, the Isla tasting. There was a yeah. dump bowl, and oh, uh, I stupidly, with Gene Oh, my Beck, God, this is delicious. ...drank it. This smells like scotch, too, by the way. I get floral this right off the definitely rip. scotch. Right the mm. mm-hmm. This is scotch. Yeah, scotch. Wait, so how I can didn't... you even read my handwriting? It's all fucked up. Well, the O's are pretty... The only thing I can read. I didn't get I'm a lot of... I'm pretty sure the thing next to it's a T or a Q. Good luck with that. Yeah. I didn't get a lot on the nose, but this is definitely a scotch. Oh, this is delicious. Oh, yeah. You it's can tell when you taste it. And it is delicious. Yeah. And it feels like it's got a little age. Yeah, I'm very happy with that, whatever that is. What, I, I, when I say age, I don't mean like a 30-year, but like this is uh, this is good. It. So the first one we tasted, <clears throat> it wasn't <clears throat> overwhelming, but it wasn't underwhelming. That's the same thing I get with the scotch. It's not really overwhelming, but it's not something that I would – you know, turn so, down. So, Chris, let me ask you this. Obviously, you're, um, the Houston Bourbon Society is much more focused on bourbon than scotch. But where, I, I disagree. You, oh, okay, so uh, tell me. I, so I, I, I know that's not the point of your yeah, no, whatever you're about to, to say, yeah. but I, I think it started at Houston Bourbon Society, and there's been many jokes through the years, like, why do we call it that? Mm-hmm. Because we've done several rum picks. We're doing several rum picks this year. Of We're course, also yeah. about to release a statewide release of Armagnac, an XO mm-hmm. blend. Oh, the cognac that we just did. Uh-huh. We just did. A, we just sold 500 uh-huh. bottles of cognac uh-huh. in, a, in, a, in less than a week. Uh-huh. So we're the Houston Booze Society is basically what we are. <laughs> we love good beers. We love good whiskey. We love good cognac, good rum. If it's good, it's good. So how does it stack up for you? Are you? Would you say that in general you're more of a bourbon guy than a scotch guy or an Irish whiskey guy or whatever? The, more bourbon than non-bourbon when it comes to whiskey? So I fell in love with scotch because of my wife and, and her family, and uh, I would say that my original love was scotch, but you you can't be in the group without finding your way through a few bottles of great bourbon, so yeah. um, I, I'm, I'm all over the place. I mean, we've talked about adding a second event of the year. We, we did a, a fall dinner a few years ago for the social. We've talked about bringing it back, but having just Mexican-based spirits, so total oh, nice. agave, yeah. tequila. Yeah, that yeah. would be mezcal, fantastic. Yeah. Yes, yeah. mezcal. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm fans of. I'm a fan of the tequila. Oh, I know you are. I can tell you this. You and rum both. You, yeah. you guys have tequila. a little bit of a love affair. <laughs> tequila yeah. and rum have a little thing going on with me. All right, we're moving to uh, spirit number three, whiskey number three, and the Matt Dillon is growing bigger and bigger, and. Uh, here we go with our uh, second to last tasting. Oh, here. Uh, the, the Matt Dillon's becoming a Bob Dillon. Yeah, <laughs> he, he pushed a cup forward too. Yeah, oh, gotcha. Go. All right, gentlemen. Yeah, this is not number good. three. The nose on this is just gross. Oh. So this is so interesting. No, not a fan. There's nothing. Yeah. Meh. This is a weird. Uh, 
conglomeration of savory spices and bad liquor. Yeah, this is actual glue. <clears throat> Doesn't just smell like glue. There's so many bad decisions. So in that glass. straight from the horse. So this reminds me of like being at someone's party and they don't have that much to choose from. Sure. So you pour one of the whiskeys they do have, and this is kind of yeah, like what you got. Yeah, what you got. Yeah. Yeah. Not happy and with you that go, at all. And you go, well, it's whiskey. This. Uh, you know what? Did he grab somebody's Matt Dillon and make this? Like. Mm. Yeah. So I've told people before that uh, you know Texas profile for Texas whiskey is just different. It's a different lane. This is actually not good. Whatever this is, it's 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 not good. Yeah. Cheap sourced bourbon or cheap young bourbon, but it's yeah, not this from is Texas. Bad. Yeah, it's not. So you're okay. If this winds up being one of the sponsors of your show, it's right? definitely not one of my sponsors. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I love the confidence with which but you say only that. because only because we don't accept sponsorship unless we like what they have. Right. Yeah. Right. So we're and a so huge Amroot fan. We're a huge Lichag fan. Bunahaben. Bunahaben. Uh, even even our friend uh, Alan mm. loves Bunahaben. This is not good. Yeah. All right. All right. So that's number three. Dude, that one's starting to get now, me. If it's a like, social of the, I'm sorry. If it's a sponsor of the social, like that's I'll be a almost nervous. instant heartburn. What do we just drink? Jesus. Mm. It, it's not good. Right. Hot glue. We will find out shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, here is our final whiskey of the blind taste test. You Can you believe here. we've made it through 14? Ooh, this tastes like lemongrass or smells like lemongrass. Oh, oh, wow. really, it really yeah. does. Mm. Or maybe that's the dish detergent you uh, use on the. Uh, oh, that would be messed up if we're smelling Dawn dish yeah. soap. <laughs> <all day. laughs> lemongrass, lemongrass dish detergent used to wash out the Glen Cairns. Molly, did you clean these like he said you did? Is this gin? Is this gin? This is the trick. This is freaking gin. Uh, <laughs> Adam's got jokes. Uh, this is gin. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> It ain't uh, That's not whiskey. Uh, Ian, you want to come clean? <laughs> Dude, Jesus Christ. How you, do you pick anything out of these I four? love I love a good gin, but that tastes like Satan's asshole. <laughs> Gentlemen. That's not, that's, not, that's not good at all. Oh Gentlemen. <laughs> Gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to punked. the show. You have just been malorded. <laughs> We've been punked. Ian brought malort yeah. and snuck it in. <laughs> yeah. That was not actually our final yeah. whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, so yeah. glad... I saved this until yeah. now. Yeah. 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 Oh. yeah, I stand by my Satan's let asshole me, remark. Let me just say, this it was a quite bitch. a deal to have Malort out of a Glen <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, oh sorry. I will say this. The nose on it at first was lemongrass. Yeah. So I was like, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tastes honestly, like- honestly, I really thought it was the cleaning solution used to clean the glasses. <laughs> and then I, uh, And then I tasted it, and I wished it was the mm. cleaning solution. I think That's definitely Malort. So <laughs> that Ian, was number four, right? <laughs> no, that one actually doesn't count. We have a final whiskey, correct? <laughs> correct, Adam. Good luck getting them. Or was out that of number four? That was four. Oh, that was number four. That was All number right. four. Yeah. Well, this is one, two, three, four. It's pretty yeah. simple. Yep, yep. I okay, think you're right. Oh, my yeah. God. oh Lord, it's 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 tainted hey, my mouth. Can you pass over that Taylor? Well, yeah. I will just tell you that I think you got a bottle of bleach back there. We can you, use it. You said <laughs> I can't believe you waited till the end to pull that on us because now we've like. Uh, yeah, dude. Ooh. All right, so gentlemen, uh, I heard you say one, two, three, four. Chris. One, two, three, four. That is exactly my ranking yeah. for these. Yes, I, I actually did that same too. for all of us. Okay, so what were they? For the first time, we all ranked these in the same order. Yeah. So number one, which we Malort uh, kind of gets favorite. its own ranking though. Yeah, yeah one, two, one, two, three, nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I called that. <laughs> All right, so the first called one that. was, in fact, uh, the, yeah. the, magic, decanter. the magic decanter. Nice, so, you're still married. Yeah, Chris, yeah, tell yeah. us what this is. I'm willing to bet my marriage. Yeah, this is 175 months old. It is a beam decanter to celebrate the 175th anniversary of the distillery. And uh, do the math, divide by 12, that's how old it is. And uh, yeah, that's just a solid, really great representation. So yeah, it was super smooth and not like that was the one that wasn't real woody at all either. Mm-hmm. It was very like. Smooth and direct. I'm sorry, I just still have this malort taste in my it's mouth. It's still there. It's horrible. It's still, it's still there. Oh, you know my favorite part of that is yeah. as soon as I put Horse that to my that nose, too. I was like, oh, Adam, do we have any more no. cups over there? Or are we out? Yeah, uh, all right, yeah, I, I gotta have something to. <laughs> this will kill it. Wash the malort <laughs> away. Wow. Malort, tonight's the night you fight your dad. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is like the greatest slogan ever. <laughs> the name that shall not be spoken. Uh, all right. So number Have you one, ever actually don't... tried Malort before? Yeah. Uh, yeah, many times. Um, <laughs> never blind though, so that was interesting. 
Yeah. And, uh, well, and we it was funny. We were all like, ooh, lemongrass. Like, <laughs> I feel like such an idiot. Okay, Adam, what was number two? <laughs> we all ranked uh, number one, which was the beam decanter, uh, number one of that segment. Number two was, oh, oh there La it Santa. is. Santa. The La Santa, the sherry cask finish, Glen And I, I wrote Ian, that down as delicious and scotch. Yeah. Yep. Ian, you want to uh, uh, show that to the camera? We may need to move the beam decanter there and make yep, sure we get absolutely. it. Absolutely. Don't drop it. This is one that's on my shelf at all times. It's that's so good. That's a really wonderful, yeah. wonderful whiskey. Yeah, it really is. All right, so that showed up number two in this segment. Number three. Oh. The Weller. Oh, the Weller Special Reserve. Was this one you brought, uh, Chris? Yep, that's another one of mine. Uh, yeah. Right. Yep, uh, that's a... Uh, What's funny is I put, fuck that, I didn't like this one at all. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, that's uh, the lowest end of the Weller line and great for movies. <laughs> great for movies. Because it'll fit in your hip pocket. That's yeah, correct. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's correct. absolutely right. Yeah. All right, and finally, number four, we might as well show the bottle for uh, <laughs> Ian. I'll just hand this to you. Yeah, it's still in my mouth. Carly uh, Rae Jepsen's <laughs> Malort. It's not going uh, away anytime soon, by the so way. So, Ian, real quickly, tell the Malort story. Uh, why is this even a thing? So Malort is a Chicago thing, and Jepson's Malort... So is crime. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it there. It's not a good thing. So is... What was the dude... Who was the politician there? The guy that wouldn't... Blagojevich? The guy that, like, wouldn't go to jail? Remember him? He was the mayor, and then he, like, wouldn't go to jail or whatever? You know, I don't I don't know that, but um, I know that Jepson, uh, Jepson's Malort got through... Um, uh, like all the years of uh, uh, prohibition, prohibition and everything, because it was a medicine. It's wormwood, so it actually will cleanse you of uh, worms. It'll cleanse you of a lot of stuff. I have. Yeah, a feeling. and yeah. Uh, it was, so it was medicinal and everything else. And there's a lot of people that really love Malort. And one of my good friends. Okay, name one. So one of my friends actually, and he should probably be on here watching this, gave me this bottle of Malort, and he mentioned when I said. So the first time I let me let me back up just a second. The first time I ever tried this, he poured everybody a glass and he's like, "Okay, everybody do a shot." And I put it to my nose and I halted and I took a small sip. And then I got angry. I was like, "What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you trying to do this to me?" And he absolutely couldn't understand it. Like the lack of understanding in his eyes made me actually take pity on him. So what are you saying? He liked Malort. He loves this stuff. Oh, wow. And he wanted to share it with friends. So this wasn't a joke like when you no, he brought was... it to me on the show or today. Oh, no, no. When I brought it to you on the show and today was definitely a joke. However, when he shared it, no, he was sharing the love of this Chicago spirit. Wow. And um, it is... Uh, it, it, it's got its own following, and it's got its own taste, that's for sure. And it and everybody does. here is still tasting this, except for me, because as soon as I smelled it, I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not drinking oh, it. Oh, yeah. So you were, <laughs> yeah. Well, you were in oh, on the by, joke. By the way, you guys, um, I would like to say I'm sorry, but I'm not. I'm <laughs> not, actually. I think that's hilarious. All right, guys, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to wrap the show up, and then we're going to come back for a bonus segment where we're going to try to do something to get the Malort out of our system. <laughs> Uh, Chris Hart will uh, do the uh, the honors with our... Uh, nope. Uh, no? No, I'm not going to drink that. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't want Corona. No, you, you've done this before. Yeah, no, yeah. Matt Dillon. That was before. All right. Well, that was in the before time. Then, yeah, yeah, then yeah. at the very least, we will enjoy some of your Amrut single malt. Absolutely. Uh, That's a uh, nice sherry, sherry yeah, bottle there. That'll, uh, that'll uh, finish off the show. But what we'll also do is we will all reveal our top five of the day. So sure. we've done we've done 14 whiskeys. Which ones did you enjoy the most? We'll rank them one to five, and that'll be our bonus segment. So for those of you uh, leaving us now, thank you for uh, enjoying Smoking and Toasting. We hope you enjoyed our blind taste test. Uh, we fully intend to be back here next week. Coronavirus be damned. So uh, uh, join us, and thank you for listening, and uh, cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers, guys. Thanks for having us on. Bonus segment coming up. Salud. Ian doesn't deserve it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you should have a call. Yeah, that's all.